Father, we pray in Jesus' name that here in this place there will be a people who are strong and know you. <laughs> that they can begin to move out and exploit. So people, if they're not strong and don't know you, then they'll be so hungry to be in all the meetings till they get a breakthrough to be strong and know you. <laughs> but in the end analysis, everybody's doing exploits. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that nobody would just shrug their shoulders and say, well, you know, I am what I am. This is what, Father, this is sorry, but this is what you get. <laughs> Bob, 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 we pray in Jesus' name such a thing would not exist among your people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for the great outpouring of your Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the rain. Thank you, Father, for the latter rain. Thank you, Father, for the moving of your divine power in our lives, for the manifestation of the Spirit. <laughs> Father, thank you for your divine working, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for change. Father, we thank you that the high looks and the self-satisfied positions that we will have taken can no longer be that which would dominate in the meetings and in the churches throughout the United States of America. But, Lord, there will be a broken people crying out desperately in need of the reality of your presence and the things that only your, your spirit can bring. Oh, God, we, your people, Lord, you're our God. We want to bring glory and honor to your name. We want to bring glory and honor to your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to bring glory and honor to your name. Bando serenea. Bando serenosta. Linga linga lo mosandorotea. Hallelujah. Mama mama nana mama nana sembredea. Lira mama nana jeka yena nana mama. Dere mena mana mosuro mama 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 nana. Me <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the mighty moving of your presence. Thank you, Father, for the mighty moving of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the mighty moving of your power. Hallelujah. Oh, Saradaradia. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, living God. You know, I was, I was just so blessed today with everybody who came to the baptism because, you know, it, I, I, you know, I was telling Anna on the way home, if every Pentecostal church in this full gospel church in this region, if they would just go and baptize outside, what a witness there would be. What a witness. Um, there was one person... He was out taking pictures and evidently told a person that was standing around that he was an agnostic and that there was something really, you know, he didn't expect to feel what he was feeling. <laughs> There's something different here. This is, what's going on here? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And, you know, I, you know, I was standing there talking to Paul and Terry when I was trying to baptize them. See, I was a spectator. I, I, I kept asking them their name. Well, what's your name? You know, and, and no, I was called. I was in another realm. I was in another place. I was just a spectator. What, what is your name again? And they were talking to heaven. Everybody come out there. I could hear. I was like a spectator hearing people talking to the throne room of heaven. I mean, that's just what was going on. I mean, it, it, it's so beautiful when God's people get together. I mean, just imagine. We, I think we've baptized 15 people today. But one, if they would have been the only ones out there, I mean, three or four or five people coming out. I mean, that's just a, pro, that's a shame. That would be a shame. But I still am blessed that the people around here who are willing to participate with the things of God. See, it's not convenient or comfortable to go out there on the beach, everybody staring at you. I mean, can't we have a little baptismal pool in the back of the churchyard so we can kind of, you know, do it in private? No, these are things, there's nothing to do in private. There's nothing to do in public. There's, there's nothing to oh, shout it from the house tops. Hallelujah. Uh, see, so, something great stirring in the kingdom of God. Father is demanding his people come on up. He is. There's, Father is commanding his people. There are people who've lived their life being prepared for what God is right now starting to do. I know, for one, I have been all my life in preparation for what's happening right now, for what's taking place. There's an authority. There is a divine power, divine glory that Father's about to unleash. Man, I'm telling you right now. More than release, it's unleash. God has got, Father has some folks on the earth that are so full of His glory, so full of His divine power. They've been laying hands on the sick when no one's been getting healed. They've been prophesying when no one would listen. They've been preaching when everyone would file out the back door. And they've not stopped. They've been doing it for years. And they've, they've been, they, are, they have been tried in the fires, the fiery furnace of faith <laughs> to stand up and begin to, to function in the exploits that God has for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord has recently told me, he just he really made me to know that I'm just not radical enough, and he wants me to step in. He wants me to step into authority. He wants me to start getting radical. He wants me to start getting, he told me he wanted me to start getting intense. I'll let people get away with stuff. And so I said, yes, sir. I said, well, you know what it's going to cost? I mean, you know what it's going to cost. <laughs> and I know what it's going to cost. So I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I'm, I'm, Lord, you know, I'll do anything for you. You know, I'm not holding, I'm not going to hold anything back. This, I'm telling you right now, this is, this is, I've, I've said, I've said this. If people cannot come to the meetings, I don't want them teaching in a Sunday school class. If they can't make it to the Sunday night meetings, I don't want them teaching in a Sunday school class. I, I, I'm, I'm not have, I'm, I want, look, you got to understand, here's where we're at. Here's where we're at, people. We are, God is calling for folks to come and break through in a realm that no one's been willing to live in. And folks just, they, they're absorbed with their own self-life. They do not practice denying themselves on a daily basis, and they say they're right with God. That's disobedience. That's living just as much in sin as far as I'm concerned as a living life of homosexuality. Is disobedience. God has called us to take, he said, if you do not take up your cross and deny yourself, you are not worthy of me. <laughs> you, can't, you cannot be my disciple. That's real. I'm just going to get radical, man. I'm just going to tell it as, as God has brought it down in his word. And then we're just going to leave it there. Because Father gives everybody the privilege of saying, yeah, I want to participate. But what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we are making, clearly making a distinction between that which is good and that which is evil, that which is a lie, that which is truth, that which is light, that which is darkness, that which is holy, that which is profane, that which is clean, and that which is unclean. <laughs> we have spent much, too, much, much, much of our time, too much time, accommodating people who are rebellious, stiff neck, don't want to cooperate, want to do it their own way. And it's simply going to happen anymore in God's house because Father's going to clean, Father's going to clean up the house. Amen. Father's going to do that which it has essential to do so that the dead are raised to life again in the meetings. Amen. So, that the, so that the works of Jesus are seen, so that the blind are able to see, the deaf are able to hear. 
to where the power of the Holy Ghost conviction is so strong, so prevalent, <laughs> that it's just like that agnostic said today. There's something going on. I'm an agnostic, but there's something. I didn't expect to see anything like this or experience anything like this. I think Heather said, you need to come to church. He said, well, it's baby steps for me. Hallelujah. Well, you just grab a hold of them and say, man, you won't be baby stepping nowhere when you see the flames of hell. No baby steps from the wrath to come. Flee from the wrath to come. So we're just going to, we're going to call all men everywhere to repent. We're going to call all men everywhere to bring forth the fruits of repentance. And we're going to be all kinds of merciful and all kinds of gracious. But we're going to make demands. We're going to place demands on folks because God's placed demands on us. People act like, oh, no, well, he's just, we'll take advantage of him. He's so merciful and so full of loving kindness. Man, you're not taking advantage of him. Anybody's fooling themselves that they think they're going to take advantage of the Father. Because, you know, he's the just judge. He's in charge. He's sovereign, almighty God. And, you know, his wrath abides upon, you know, wickedness and those things that the children of disobedience are doing. And praise God that we've escaped. Praise God for that. Praise God. There's just a reality is this. There's such a stir of divine power. There's such a stirring of Father's will. I see a stirring on the level where people are becoming really submitted to the will of the Father and being involved with what God's doing rather than what religion is doing. Rather, rather than wearing themselves out for their own self-interest, beginning to wear themselves out for the purposes of God. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of you, you'll obey me. Listen, a lot of folks signed up at the beginning of the year, and they said, okay, I vow to live my life for God in the most radical way in the year 2014. It's about over now. I want to be able to look at back on, I, you know, we said it over and again by the Spirit of the Lord, to look back on the year 2014 and say, that year I fully lived for God. I was all in. I gave everything that I could possibly give. I surrendered everything I could. And, you know, we, just, we want people to just understand and begin to measure the things in their life of where they're living for their self, where they're not living for God, where they don't have time for the Lord. And so that's one of the reasons we commanded you to start to read the Word of God in 90 days, which is a real easy thing to do because that's only an hour a day. Every day. But that'll change your life. That will change most people's lives because they don't do that. They, you know, they, they have no concept of, of the way that people like me live five, six hours a day in the Word. They have no concept for that. No concept. They can't even relate. How, how on earth can you live in the Word and live in prayer that many hours in a day? There's, you know, the only way you're going to have a concept of it is you've got to begin somewhere. And we want, we want you to, you know, we want you to understand 90 days you read through the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. 90 days, one hour a day, you'll read from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation 21. 22, 21. In, in just 90 days. You can take the four Gospels and you can read through them easily. Easily. In 10 days, every 10 days. Day one, day two, day three, day four. Day and of course, take... My sequential gospels, chronological description of the life of Mr. Jesus, and it's going to have a, a dramatic impact on you because the way it's laid out, you're constantly confronting the miracles of Jesus. You're constantly confronting signs and wonders and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And when you're, when you're reading that way, you know, where you're reading, basically, you would read, you know, probably, I'm, I'm going to say maybe, maybe 45 minutes. If you were going to do the four Gospels every 10 days. So for, for less than two hours of your time, you know, people say, you know, for less than $2, you can have, you know, ultimately end up with, you know, $2 billion. If you just give $2 a day, you can live, end up with $2 billion. If you can be convinced to believe that, you would do that, no problem. I'm going to give you 2 bucks a day. I'm going to get 2 billion. When am I going to get the $2 billion? Or even $2 million, Or even 200000 I'm saying two, two hours investment of your time, your whole life will be changed. Inside of a year, your whole life will be changed. 
I mean, because if, you, if, you, if it's the Word of God in the context of this anointing that I'm ministering to, your whole life will be changed. If there's that kind of, kind of commitment, that kind of faithfulness, that kind of discipline. And you know, that's really what the Lord woke me up with this morning, a discipline. And, and why people don't want to be disciplined. How that, you know, I always ministered to you this morning on Luke chapter 19 and, Luke chapter two, and Matthew chapter 25. Of where basically there was, in both cases, an unjust servant. That really what he was saying is, look, you know what? I've got my own life to live. I've got my own vision and purpose. I've got my own interests. I've got my own things to do. And besides that, you're hard, you're controlling, and you're unreasonable. I'm going to take what's yours. I'm going to put in a little napkin. When you come back, I'll give it to you. I'm going to keep it for you. So absorbed with yourself. You're not making heaven, man. You just ask Jesus what he said about that. Ask him what he said about it. It's a real parable about our relationship with him. And so, you know, once again, Father's got all the mercy. He's got all the love. He's got all the grace. He, 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 um, he doesn't run out of it. He's there to help us and teach us and uphold us. But we got to participate. People think that they don't have to participate. I want every one of you to be able to experience what I experienced today standing in the water baptizing people I want every one of you to be able to know such a moving of the power of God in your life and I'm telling you right now I'm so desperate for more I'm so desperate for more somebody said well I did this in the past I did that in the past. forget about it man who cares about what you did in the past and what you did in the past has no meaning now <laughs> there's no meaning right now other than it brought you possibly into a greater yieldedness and submission to the Holy Ghost so that you can function and flow in the realms that God has called us to function and flow in in a greater dimension because of what you've been through. That's it. That's the only, re that's the only value, the past. But unfortunately, a lot of people's value or experience in the past actually keeps them that much further away from submitting to the Holy Ghost and flowing in that divine power. But that's not, not going to be of you. The people that are around you, it's not going to be of you. What you're going to do is you're going to understand the call of God, the purposes of God. You're going to understand the time and the hour in which you live in. You're not going to, step, you're not going to sit back and just let everything go down you know, the road of, of apostasy and rebellion and, and, and status quo. You're going to have enough encounter with God that you'll believe who He is and recognize the power that He's given and begin to cry out for the change. I mean, the Lord says, will there be any faith when he comes? When the Son of Man comes, will there be any faith? Will there be anybody left on the face of the earth that realizes why men ought to always pray and not to faint? Huh. And because prayer is about laying hold on something in God and having it right here in our life. His will being done. For real, his will being done. Not your will and trying to superimpose it upon God. Trying to cast your ideas upon God taking whatever it is that you created in your life and saying it's, the, it's, 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 it's that which has been brought down from heaven. No, it's that which has been produced by Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost that was modeled and revealed for us in the life and ministry of Jesus and in the Word. All the rest of it's nonsense. It's religion. It's dead, dried up, powerless religion. It's time there's somebody in this earth that be, some group of people they began to respond to God on the level of that which we know Father has purposed to bring forth in these last days. An army of people so sold out to God who no longer live for themselves. They've denied themselves. They've taken up their cross. They no longer live for their own life. As Father, your will be done in my life right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Real Christianity is about to come on the scene. Yes, Bring it on. Real Christianity, the life of Jesus Christ, the life of God, the expression and the power of the Holy Ghost issuing forth from a people who's given over to the spirit of holiness with, uh, with a, a, an unlimited measure of the life of God like rivers flowing out of them. Yeah, the love, the joy, the peace, <laughs> the, the divine power, the glory, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. Living in divine health. Living in divine power. Right. Say, Father, Father strengthen, my body, strengthen my body so I can stand against sickness and disease. So I can stand against sickness and disease. 
Lord, strengthen me in my spirit. To stand against sin and iniquity. Lord, strengthen me in my body. So that I can stand against sickness and disease. Lord, strengthen me in my spirit. So I can stand against sin and iniquity. There we go. Lord, strengthen me in my soul. To love only you. To love only you. To desire only holy emotions. To desire only holy emotions. To desire only those pleasures. To desire only those pleasures. That are at your right hand. That are at your right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, lead me not. Father, lead me not. Into temptation. But deliver me. From evil. From evil. Because you're in charge. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Forever. And that means now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, we, what God's people need to be able to demonstrate is that this life in God is a, the abundant life. It is an immeasurable life. It is the truly the only life. I mean, compared to this life, everything else is dead while you live. And that's something that should be visible and obvious. But we're, there's going to have to be major changes to living in the life of Christ and being under the glory cloud of His divine power and fire. For it to be what that obvious expression that it's supposed to be. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you're going to make a decision of whether, I and mean, I believe this. I mean, I believe God is going to bring people to where they're going to make a decision to, to, to clearly define whose side they on. Are you for God? Are you for the powers of darkness? Father is creating such a canyon between the two realms. That people aren't going to be crossing over, living on one side or the other, back and forth continually. That's what Father's doing right now. And we're just calling on people to come over and stand alongside of Him. It's time we have to stop gluing and pasting the kingdom, uh, the body of Christ together. That's right. It's true. Scotch tape and Elmer's glue. And, it's, and Father's had, this, had it this way too long. There's probably only one man stood for God during the days of Joshua, and that was Joshua. And as soon as he was taken out, they fell apart. Because they, 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 never came to, they never come to know the one that Joshua modeled for them. People, listen, there is no reason for there to be such a lack of the moving of God in your life. There's no reason for there be, to be anything less than such earth-shaking Holy Ghost manifestation of the power of the, Holy, of the Spirit of the Lord here in the midst of His church. You know, I, 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 yeah, you know it just, it, for me, like when we went out to baptize people on the beach today. I mean, I just had good to have church out there continually, right there on the beach, right there on the shore, shoreline. Because the glory of God is just so, uh, the power of God is just, uh, just mine. Just standing there singing, you know. People are bug-eyed. They didn't, what on earth are they doing down there now? Uh, it, it's time to let the life of Jesus Christ be made manifest through you. It's going to cost you. Every day you're going to have to deny yourself. You're going to have to just say, look, you know what? I've determined to be worn out for Jesus. I just determined I'm going to be worn out. I'm going to quit wearing myself out for my own self-interest and saying that I'm right with God. And acting like it's somebody else's fault. Right? Like the person, like the unjust steward who took and said, oh, Lord, you just a hard man. You hard. I was afraid of you. You hard. You unfair. Reaping where you did not sow. Nonsense. Nonsense. No, you just had your own life you wanted to live. You don't want to live my life. 
people, I, I'm going to tell you right now, we want you to get over into living this life because it's the abundant life. It's the God life. It's, a, it's heaven on earth. <laughs> oh, we have to wrestle with people to try to get them blessed. You know, Father's been doing that a long time. Father's wrestled with Jacob to get him blessed. <laughs> Listen, we gave you a commandment last Sunday. You're going to read the Bible in 90 days. If you're not doing it, you're disobedient, and it's proof that you live for yourself. You live in your own life. You don't even have an hour to give to God a day. So he can train you. The Word of God is spirit and life. I mean, there's a, lot, a, a, a large portion of the Bible that I can quote, and it's still just spirit and life to me. And it's a demonic lie, and it's a demonic trick that, that, that deceives people where they go ahead and live out their own life pretending that they write with God. It's a self-centered life. Jesus said, unless you take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. You're not worthy of me, period. You can't write any other whatever in there. The Lord took of his self and of the things that he has, and he has committed them unto us. Luke chapter 19. I, if you weren't in the meeting this morning, I encourage you to get, get on the YouTube, watch it. God's laying a foundation. He's calling a people. He's doing some separating. It's going on right now. It's taking place. It's true. It's taking place. God's just taken his abundant life, this glorious gift of salvation, and he's given it to us, and he defined what it looked like, and he said, I'm empowering you with my Holy Spirit and, my, and the fire of my glory. And he goes as, and receives the kingdom. He's coronated the king, receives the kingdom. He goes away into a far country, and he's coming back. And to each man, he's going to bring you, each one of you, he's going to bring you into account. Yeah. My dear friend Tim Hall who really has done everything pretty much that Reinhard Bonnke's done in Africa, one day leaned forward to Reinhardt and said, Reinhardt, what has the Lord shown you? I mean, when it all comes down after all this that we've gone through, what, what is it that's outstanding above everything? What has God shown you? Reinhardt leaned forward to Tim and with his rough and gruff voice said, souls, souls, and more souls. Well, you ain't ever going to get that until you get baptized, dipped into the glory of heaven. <laughs> Till you have an encounter of God that causes you to hate your life in this world. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to live tormented and, and, and tossed when you take a hold of the power of God. You're going to live an abundant life. Hallelujah. Huh? Church will be first, not second. You won't get here when it's convenient for you. Huh? You won't be going from one place to the next, pointing fingers at people, talking against God and His anointed ones. Because that's the, the difference of the power of error, speaking continually against God and yeah. against his anointed ones. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm, I've just been, the Lord's had it so strong on me. Satan should be loose for a little season. And he's loose for a little season at the end of a thousand year reign because people, you know, God's going to give people an opportunity if they want to rebel. And we see these things going on right now. There are plenty of folks that will validate your evil. They will validate your rebellion. They will validate your self-interest and live in your life for yourself and say you're fine, you're all right. But God, the Holy Ghost, is going to reprove you, rebuke you, correct you, instruct you in the ways of the Father's life. People don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be instructed. They don't want to change. God's going to say, God, Father, says, change. You're not living that way no more. Come under, the, come under my authority. That's what Father says. I mean, people just need to get it. They need to get it radically. And, you know, it always amazes me when I read that verse, Scripture, Revelation, chapter 20, I'm just always amazed. They've lived under the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, of angels, of the resurrected saints, of the visitations of the Father. <laughs> Which is going to be amazing. And the Scripture says that when Satan's loose for a little season, Satan goes with his propaganda. He begins to speak against God. When he speaks against God, he's always speaking against his anointed servants, his mouthpiece. And people don't even know how to, they don't have a filter. Because they, they're so wide open to imaginations. They don't know, their imaginations run wild. They don't know how to shut down the lies of the enemy. And they just caught, captivated, caught up in this accusation against God and his servants. The scripture literally says that for number, they will be as the number of the sand upon the seashore. That those who will respond to Satan and now come up to fight against God and to fight against his saints. Nothing's different. 
right now. People under the same lie, under the same influence, fighting against God by way of fighting against his ministers. Oh, yeah. I mean, Paul, John put it right. They who hear us hear God. They that do not hear us do not hear God. John put it right. If you walk in the light as he's in the light, then you have fellowship one with another. A lot of people don't have fellowship with me because they don't walk in the light as he's in the light. I do. And everybody that I know that walks in the light as he is in the light, I have fellowship with them. They're my, my, they my brothers. They're my sisters. My mother, my father. I mean, they're family. Instantaneously. You can watch, you can watch people. They're just defiant. Say, they write with God. Huh? Jesus, they said, Jesus said, your mother and your brethren are without waiting to see you. They're outside waiting to see you. He said, well, you don't understand? Who's my mother, my brother, my sister? That's right. They that did the will of my Father in heaven. Yeah. Same as my mother, my brother, yeah. my sister. Huh? Yeah. People want to say that they love God and they hate their brother. People want to say they submitted to the Holy Ghost and they do not listen to the mouthpieces that God raised up. The same way you respond to any anointed man of God is the same exact way you respond to Jesus Christ. Yep. True. Same exact way that you respond to the Holy Ghost. It's no different. That's right. yeah. It's no different. True. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. That's what Father says. You may say it different, but you don't count. What Father says, exactly how you treat. The least of these, my brethren, is how you treat me. Yeah. So they, they, they even, you even did, I mean, he, just, he got really radical with it. Put a little child in front of them. He said, they receive, if you receive anyone who comes in my name like this little child, same receives me. He receives me, receives my father. That's pretty radical, isn't it? Yeah. The Lord really brings it down to how we're interacting with one another. The father examines how, well, how we're doing. He, says, he looks at us and he says, are you okay without there being a revival in the land? Are you okay without the same measure of the glory that I described in my word that should be in your life. Are you okay without it being in your life? Are you willing to go ahead and let your whole time and purpose be consumed on your own self-interest? He's looking at them. He's not going to say to those, well done, my good and faithful servant who took what he gave, wrapped it up in a napkin, said, you know, I'm not really interested. I've got my own fish to fry, my own things to do. You've got to realize we got, you know, we've got to, Take care of our house and our clothing. No, you get over in this realm and you won't care about your house anymore. Yeah, you won't think, of, think about your food anymore. Yeah. It's a faith realm. You get over in this realm, you have an encounter with God, everything changes. The problem is people haven't had much of an encounter with God. You have an encounter with God, you'll weep. You'll weep with the compassions of the Lord Jesus Christ over the lost. You will not tolerate there being anything less than the display of his power through your life because it's what he's commanded. It's what he's ordained. And for us to not have it, there's something going on in our lives that's preventing it. And you won't, you won't be willing to abide it. We want you to hear this. I want you to burn with the passion of it. I want, I want you to just understand there's none of this that you can even get till you have an encounter with God. And you're not going to have an encounter with God prioritizing the meeting. You come whenever it's convenient to you. Oh, I don't come on Wednesday nights because it's not convenient. We come to these, we come to these meetings for your breakthrough. Amen. So you quit living like you're living. Uh -huh. You start living like he's called us to live Amen. in his divine power and glory. That's why we do this. And then you're not coming. We're coming for your breakthrough, and it's not convenient for you. Because you pursue in your own life, your own interest, and saying you're following Jesus. Nonsense. Nonsense. I'm stirred up. I'm stirred up. God, the Holy Ghost has stirred me up. God, the Holy Ghost has stirred me up with a radical passion. Just tell him, look, you just sh show him the mirror. You tell him to look. Come behold me. Jesus is asking everybody, come behold me. He's, he's, he's called us to the same life that he has, same works that he did. He's called us to represent heaven like he represented heaven. Jesus isn't going to be the king in the future. He's king right now. Yeah. It's not about his kingdom in the future. It's about his kingdom right now. We the first in, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. We the ones voluntarily in. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. And seated with them in heaven. We're not waiting for a day. We in the day. <laughs> People think that there's some kind of sanctification in the sepulcher. There's no sanctification in the sepulcher. As you live, you die. As you die, you'll live for eternity. Yeah. You know, we're going we're gonna to worship a little bit, but I want it to be worship. I want to be singing. I want it to be singing. I want it to be worship. You need, you, need, you need to cry out for the move of God in your life. To where you're hungry and thirsty for the things of heaven. Where you're passionate and desperate for the reality of God. Amen. It's time that there's false, the time that the false witnesses come to an end. Somebody's all upset about the Jehovah's Witness. So am I. But I'm more upset about the false witness. People say, oh, this is the life of Christ. I need the life of Christ. Huh? When, he, when, you, when he, you live in for yourself and not for him, and you live for yourself and not for him, you're not going to have the power of God demonstrated to your life. You're not going to have hunger and thirst. You're not going to love and enjoy being in his presence. You're not called to a place of prayer. You don't know what it means with total abandonment to take no thought for your life because you're not even in that realm. You're outside looking, wonder, do I even want to go in? The Lord says those that are outside, they should strive to enter in the narrow way. They should strive to enter in. It's a narrow gate. Get in here, man. You won't want to live for you no more. You won't want your own life anymore. Come, and then in comparison to the life that he gives, you'll hate the one you had in the world. Ha. Hallelujah. 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 You'll be saying, why is it that we only have church on Sunday nights, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Friday nights, and Saturdays? Why? We need to step this thing up and include Mondays and, and Thursdays. It's not convenient for you because you live in your own life. You need to stop it. You're pursuing your own interest. You need to stop it. Oh, well, isn't God interested in what I'm doing? No, he's not. He told you to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. Do what he did. He said, count the cost. He said, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. So count the cost. Just like a man about ready to build a tower. Make sure you got enough money. Make sure you truly understand what you're doing. Everybody stepped out in the water today. I asked them, do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing? You're saying your life is over. You're not living for yourself. You are vowing and pledging that you're dead, buried, with Christ Jesus and now living a totally new life that he purchased with his own blood and God's will has commanded to find what it's supposed to look like every day. I actually was in this, I was actually a spectator. I'm very, I, for example, I know Paul and Terry's name very well. And I'm looking at him and say, what's your name? They're trying to tell me their names and say, what's your name? Because it was though I was a spectator and they were talking to the father. They were announcing their names to the assembly in heaven. It was a beautiful thing. I was so blessed. I do not, I do not know how I was standing. I just wanted to hear people singing. I, I, kept coming to the, I kept coming to the shore. There was a beautiful song the Lord gave us to sing and sing it louder because I couldn't sing. I could. It is wonderful to live in the glory. You, I mean, I, I, get, I get the pry bar, pry bar out, out, out after you trying to pry out from the world. I, was, I went home and I read the message when Jesus preached in the synagogue at Capernaum. He said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And people are sitting there going, he is completely out of his mind. If you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have, I am the true bread that came down from heaven. He that eat, eats of me shall live forever. They're going, this is just too wild. 
And that day, all of his disciples, he had a great following that had risen after he'd taken and fed 5,000 on a few loaves and fishes, five loaves and a few fishes. That day, at the end of the meeting, he was back down to 12. And they were thinking about leaving. He turned to them and he said, so you're going also? And they're giving him that look like, Where else can we go? We don't get it. But we know this much. You alone have the words of eternal life, so we're sticking with you. Amen. And they left everything. They left everything. They walked out on everything. You think it's easy? You think it was easy for them to leave their trade, their craft, their families, their homes? To go follow Jesus, you think, oh, it was easy for them. You know, if they lived 2,000 years ago, it was easy. Same challenges that you and I face. Nothing's different. Father's looking for some people going to be radical and, ha, ah, sepulchral. And he's found one in me. And you're just going to have to decide whether he's found one in you. And I've got the fruits to prove it. I have the evidence and the witness and the testimony in my life to prove it. God gives us quantifiable measurable proofs every day whether we live for him for him or living for ourselves yes. and it's time you start looking at it and say am i living for us get real with god because god the holy ghost is the spirit of truth he's not mixing it up with some self-justified lie he's not mixing it up with that it's time for you to look yes. it's time for you to wake up in the morning and say to yourself holy spirit am i really willing to follow you all the way into your kingdom Am I willing to really to be led by you, to walk, by, to walk in you, to live by you? To do only those things which you show me to do? You do that, it won't take long. And what's going to happen is you're just going to be walking along, just doing, just doing, minding your own everyday business about the chores that you have to do. And you're going to get busted by the Lord. And you'll all of a sudden begin to weep. And you'll fall down on the ground. Weeping for nations, weeping for souls, weeping for people that are around you, weeping for family members. And you'll see things start changing too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Suddenly, you won't just religiously be going to prayer. Suddenly, you'll have an interaction enough with God, a relation, a personal relationship enough with the Lord that you can feel the call to prayer. You can recognize the call to prayer. You don't just give it a little little rumble of prayer and go on bu busy with what you're doing. You recognize the Holy Ghost is calling you. God, the Holy Ghost calls people to prayer all the time. They don't even recognize it. All of a sudden, you feel that just a freedom, a, a gushing of a prayer come up through you just out of nowhere. God, the Holy Ghost calling you to prayer. Oh, well, you don't have time. I understand because you live your life for yourself. And you serve God when it's convenient for you. Sunday morning. No more. I'm not going to abide it. False witness. Amen. I'm going to be up against false witness as much as I am up against Job's witness. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm going to bring the word of God to you. Right. I had a Job's witness say to me the other day. He said, ah, it doesn't say one place in the Bible. Jesus, it's not, it doesn't say one place in the Bible that Jesus is God. I said, it says, yeah, it says it a thousand times in the Bible. <laughs> And he starts ranting and raving. I just stood there in the anointing. I stood there in the anointing. And just looking at him, smiling at him until the power of God came on him. And he says, it says it a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. God was born as a holy embryo to purchase your salvation. And then the Lord told me, just tell him what he is. I said, you're a demon-possessed Gnostic. That's what you are. You're filled with, you're filled with the same evil spirits. That, that, and I started taking him back to it. And the Lord says, well, why don't you talk to my people like that and tell them where their error, their ways are? I said, yes, sir, I'll start doing it. I want them to pay the price. Amen.
Because if you just if you start dealing with these things, what all is going to happen is you'll get real with God. He'll get real with you. You say, yeah, you know what? He's right. We're supposed to have an inexpressible expressions of Almighty God pouring out of us that it's like rivers. Huh? Not just every once in a while, a little blip on the scene, a little smile, a little chuckle, a little happy time. Power of God, the life of God, the life of Jesus. Uh -huh. God's purpose that you and I glorify him in our body and in our spirit, which are his. It says his. It said his. He's, it's, he said it's his, not yours. Don't be a thief. You, turn, you said you, you let God buy you, and you try to take it back. You let God buy you, purchase you. Now you try to lay claim as though you have ownership, and right? Do it your own way. It's a lie. God said all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Today in these last days, here's where we're at. People want to make sin less than treason, covenant breaking less than treachery, lies re le less than something that is a damnable sin. To which everyone who participates will have their part in the lake of fire. And they want to make trust, not trust, or breaking trust with God common. If you in this church, you called beer on Wednesday night. If you're not, because you're disobedient and defiant. You're serving yourself and living your own life. You hear me? It's true. The only reason we have in a meeting, it's not religious. It's a, we're, we're, tr we're breaking through to a realm of saying, look, a revival has got to come to this nation. The display of the power of God has to be seen once again in the midst of his church. And we here, we're going to press in till something happens. Till the strongholds and the hindrances and the things that have held me back can no more hold me. Till their glory is revealed to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One day I expect to see God's people so responding to the Lord. I come walk in the building. Folks are all laying out all over the floor under the anointing, interceding by the Spirit of the Lord, having heavenly visions, calling things out in the Spirit <laughs> that are not as though they were, and seeing the faith, faith realm of God become man, manifested through their life. To rise up with a glory glow upon their face. To now speak the authority, the word of authority. To cast out devils. To function as a member in the body of Christ. Instead of a member in the body of strife. We should say it again. Jesus name. I'm just trying to catch everybody up from this. There's, there's no way I could repeat everything that went on this morning. God did some things this morning I've never done before. That I'm never going to forget. I'll never forget them. They'll be with me for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. That's the way every meeting should be. Every meeting, we're getting equipped. Every meeting, we're getting built up. Every meeting, we're laying hold of things in God that is pushing the envelope. It's pushing it forward. It's pushing it forward. It's not being held back. It's not being assimilated. It's not being neutralized. It's pushing it forward. It's pressing into that realm which God has called us to. No holding back. Uh, willing to pay the price. The consecration of our entire life. We no longer live. They have baptized people. I said, you know what you're doing? You are, you're, this is a commitment and a testimony that you no longer live. Your life is over. It's dead and buried with Jesus. And that from this day, you live for him. <laughs> Father's looking. His eyes go to and fro, looking. He's looking. He's looking for those who will, be, who will stand with him, stand for him, will be champions in this earth. Who he can do exploits through. Who will be all in for him. Who will not blaspheme his name or reproach his name. Or he raised them up to be some kind of, any kind of a leader. And then they're leading people into false hoods. Leading people into lives that do not honor and glorify God. You follow some people and you're going to end up in hell. You follow some people and you're going to get stuck in the ditch of religion. And compromise and living for the self. There is no room for self 
in this life in Christ Jesus. There is no room. You're going to have to have an encounter with God because until you do, you will love yourself and you will cling to your life and you will champion your ideas. But when you have an encounter with God, you will hate your life in this world. You will no longer want that thing that's called the realm of self, your realm of your own will, the realm of your own interest. You'll be in love with the one who died and rose again for you. There's an encounter waiting for you. I've had the encounter. I'm talking about it. I look at people who haven't had the encounter and I get stirred. Look. There's all kinds of patience and mercy. The reality of it is, though, when people haven't had the encounter and there's the absence of hunger to have the encounter, well, then that's intolerable. That's intolerable. That's intolerable. And I'm going to quit just, I'm going to quit acting like I don't notice. I'm going to get in people's space. I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm going to get in your space. I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to come stand with him, and I'm going to knock at the door of your heart, and I say, who do you live for? Prove it. Prove it. Somebody said, are you, John, you like John the Baptist? No, I want to be, though. He's far more radical. I have not stepped into that level of radical yet. I have not stepped into that realm, that realm of authority yet, but I want it. I want it. Hallelujah. In fact, I want people to say, I want people to look at me. I want people to look at you and say, I encountered Jesus. I encountered Jesus. I met somebody in the body of Christ. I encountered Jesus. I met somebody who's genuinely saved. I love it. I mean, I love the testimony of an agnostic saying, I'm an agnostic, but there's just something. What's going on here? What did he say, Heather? He said, this is very emotional. I can feel this power. He must have took 100 pictures more. He's flashing pictures. I saw his wife. I looked at his wife. I saw such a call of God upon her life. I was busy doing the things that we were doing with, with baptism. I'm saying, Lord, I hope somebody else has got some discerning of spirit to see that you're ministering to that woman right there. And then, unfortunately, no one was there yet. That's... The Lord loves you. He wants you to have a breakthrough. So all you care about and think about and attend to are, that, are his interests. Because Father's not doing anything on the, in the earth except through you and me. And if we're not going to be a part of it, nothing's going to get done. And you'll be held responsible. And I'll be held responsible. Huh? I began to pray for this man. I said, Lord, I know he took 100 pictures or more. So, Father, I want you to do a supernatural work because he begins to look at those pictures. I want him to bust. I want him to bust. I want him to begin to weep just looking at his pictures. Hallelujah. Because one thing I did notice is that everybody was standing out there for the most part, when, at least when I was out there worshiping, you were captivated. You were raptured away in a realm called Holy Land and a realm called Heavenly. Amen. See, that's the light. That's the salt. And it's, there, there, there needs to be light. Otherwise, men will remain in darkness. There's going to have to be salt. Otherwise, there's no pers preservation. The life of Christ is going to have to be allowed to live big through you and me. And the only way that's possible is you've got to deny yourself. Somebody said, oh, come on. I want to take care of it tonight. Fine. You're going to take care of it in the morning, too. And all through the day tomorrow. And the more you just get, hey, listen, but you know what? It's really easy when you're walking in the glory. <laughs> when you're in come on, say, when you're in communion, when you get to finally, when you now step into a relationship with the Lord, where you actually hear him say, do this. Yes. Turn here. Yes. Say this. You see a person and you know what's going on in their life. You walk up to them. Hey, this is what the Lord has to say for you. To you. Hey, why are you running from God? I knew a person came and visited me yesterday, and day before yesterday, they were all busted up and broken. They said, I went to the doctor to get some antidepressants. And the doctor said, your only problem is that you're running from God. You are a rebel. I'm not giving you any antidepressants. I'm telling you, you need to go get down on your knees and get right with your master. And so, praise God for a doc. Amen. Somebody who's not ashamed of the gospel. 
Not just saying, oh, bless your heart. Now, what's wrong with you? Who hurt your feelings? What happened to you when you were in grade school? I mean, whatever. <laughs> empathy, human empathy. Somebody who could speak by the Spirit. Who's willing to, who knows enough about the things of God. And she had never been to this doctor before. And so she started crying. She immediately made, called me up, made an appointment with me. Said, I won't come back. I want to give my life back over to Jesus. I went to the doctor to get antidepressants, and they told me I was running from God and that I was rebellious. <laughs> and the doctor was absolutely right. One doctor who diagnoses perfectly the situation <laughs> and prescribed the right remedy. Father wants to make known and reveal the hearts of people around us. He wants to make known His love he wants to show forth his glory and his power through us, but we're going to have to count the cost and pay the price. Yes. Yes. You have to quit living it according to your own ideas. You've got to come under the authority of the Holy Ghost. You have to come under the authority of his ministers, those that he's raised up in his church. You have to submit yourself to God's will instead of your will. You're going to have to learn how not to be a rebel, rebel and defiant. You're going to have to learn how to walk in humility and yeah. submission. What you do and how you interact with the church, the body of Christ, with the brethren, with those who have the rule over you is exactly how you interact with Christ Jesus. It's no different. That's what he said. And he knows what he's talking about. People want to try to explain it away. God knows what he's talking about. We're going to get down on our face before God. And it ain't going to be some religious service. We get down on our face before God where nobody else can see us. In your closet, in your room, in your bedroom, wherever it is that you go to. And you're going to cry out and ask God to flood your soul with reality and truth. You're, tr you're tired of living a false identity. Playing games with church and religion. Saying that you serve Him when you don't serve Him. You serve yourself. It's measurable. Spend more time for you than you do for heaven. I'm telling you right now, if I work full time at a job, of course, I, I, have, I do a lot of different things, but if I worked full time at a secular job, I'd make sure that God got at least five minutes more. So if I work eight hours, I'd give God eight hours and five minutes. And of course, when I did, I, I lived that way. I, gave, I made sure I kept track of the time. God got all Saturday, all day Saturday. God got all day Sunday to make up for the difference. Because usually on the weekdays, it was only four or five hours in, in giving myself to writing and prayer. Isn't that true, honey? You live with me. You can tell whether or not it's true. And, and I and everybody else who knows the Lord are witnesses against those people who say they don't have any time. You don't have any time because you haven't had an encounter with God. You don't know who Jesus is. Because I'm not talking about anything that's legalistic or ritual. Right. I'm talking about something yeah. that is a love relationship. Yeah. You don't want to be anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You've been called into his presence. And I know where I'm at with God. And I hear Father saying, listen, I want you to come apart into a solitary place with me. He's calling me to spend more time with him. Ha, <laughs> 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 Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to get people to read the Bible one hour a day. To make it through the Word of God from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21 in, nine, in, 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 in uh, three months. Nine weeks. Wait, yeah. 90 days. Those of you who didn't do it, you have time to repent. Now you're going to you're gonna have to read for two hours this week to get caught up. Then you can go back to an hour. But by next week, if you still don't do it, if you delay, if you procrastinate, you say, the Lord has delayed his coming. We're going to eat and drink and do our own thing. Then the next week, it's going to take three hours a day to get caught up. And now you're in such a hole, you're not going to get out. You won't do it. Because if you wouldn't do it in an hour a day, you're not going to do it in three hours a day. And that's the way the spiritual life is. That's the way it works. People constantly delaying, constantly delaying. The Lord has given me a word tonight to minister to you. Because, I, you know, I, I got home and, and uh, you know, of course, I've been standing up all day. You guys have been sitting down most of the time. 
And I got home, I was a little bit tired. And the Lord just drawing me to his word. So I grabbed the hold of the word. I grabbed, grabbed the hold of the word. And the Lord said, I want to show you something. The Lord showed me something. I'm going to show it to you here in a minute. Listen, I want you to just understand what plainly what I'm saying. There is a realm that Father wants you to have. He's inviting you to have it. He's doing more than just giving you an invitation. Hey, we'd really like you to come. We'd really love to see you. I hope you can show up. No, he's pleading. He's begging. He's earnestly calling. Come in this realm. Come in this realm. All we want you to do is respond. I want you to hear him. I want you to hear him. Demands lots of change. It's going to be very uncomfortable for you. Because you're not in control anymore. You're not in control of your life. No more. You don't get to make no more decisions for you. Feeling a little queasy? Your life comes to an end. But here's the good news. In that, his life begins. In that, his power begins to be made manifest. Satan may be going about as a roaring lion seeking he may, whom he may devour, but the Lord's eyes are going to and fro looking for whom he may empower. Yeah. Father's looking for anybody who's willing to do it his way, not their way, his way. Not adding to it, not taking away from it, his way. Amen. He's looking for somebody to say, okay, Lord, I will take up my cross to deny myself every day. You know, by and large, Jesus said most of this in the context of I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm going to be crucified. Peter tried to take him and rebuke him, and he turned around and rebuked Satan. So you don't even know, you don't even know what you're saying. All you, want to do is, all you want to do is preserve your life. You want to live your life the way you think about it, the way you define it, the way you think is good. Yeah, that's where he broke, that's where Jesus broke it down big time. So that ain't life. This morning. This afternoon, because we didn't get out of here until 2 o'clock. But this afternoon, the Lord laid it out and spoke it through me. What shape, what, in, in the context of what will you give for your soul? What will you sell your soul for? And then I heard it. Going once. Going twice. Going three times. Sold to yourself or to Jesus. Going once. Going twice. Your soul's up for auction. Your soul's up for bid. Going three times. Sold to yourself or to Jesus. You need to make the decision. Quit vacillating between two opinions. I'm going to serve myself today. I'll serve the Lord tomorrow. I'm going to do what's convenient for me. When it's convenient for me, I'll take care of you too, Lord. When I feel really good, when all the, everything's working out and everything just stacked up just right, I'll make it to the meeting. I don't even know what the meeting is. The meeting's a pressing in. It's a waiting on God. It's a gathering together of ourselves unto Him. It's a keeping of the resurrection. It's a de declaration of the, of the parousia or the coming of the Lord Jesus. It's a waiting upon Him. It's a cleaving unto Him. It's saying, Father, we're sick of this. We're sick of allowing. It's our fault. It's our fault. We're the hinder of lawlessness. We were the hinder of iniquity. And we've not done our job. And we've not stood up and our, taken our place in you, the authority that you've given us. To push back the powers of hell. To show forth your mighty power. And Father, we're not going to let it rest. We're not going to let it stand like it is right now. Because Father's not going to let it stand. So I pray in Jesus' name tonight. You find yourself in a consecration meeting. And then tomorrow morning you find yourself in a consecration meeting. And that's all about, I'm not living for myself. I'm living for Jesus. I've been set apart, sanctified. Set apart for holy use. Not for any profane. Not for any self-interest. Not for any common use. I belong only to God. To minister unto Him. 
Your people, I pray that you understand the opportunity you have to participate with the Holy Ghost and how wonderful and how beautiful it is. And if you'll participate with him, he'll train you and teach you. But if you sit occupied with your own interests, you're, you're going to have nothing. You're going to sell out your soul. You know, I believe that people ought to just go ahead and make a decision whether they're going to follow, walk, walk with God or whether they're going to walk with the devil. And, and if they're going to walk with the devil, you might as well just go ahead and get whatever you can get now because you're going to be tormented for the rest of your life, for the rest of eternity. It's time people stop playing pretend and, and make a clear distinction between what God said and what he didn't say, what he's required of us, and what we've, in our make-believe religion, been willing to to create for ourselves a space to occupy. So we can sab, you know, some conscience that we have or try to give yourself a little security with our little idol of religion. And God said, your life is over. Your life is over. You no longer live. You're mine. You, long, you no longer live. You're mine. You're mine. You glorify me in your body and your spirit. You don't decide what you're doing with your time. I bring you to a church. I lead you to a church. I put you under, I put you under authority. And you, you, you find your place of servitude and obedience to that authority. And you do it my way as I've ordained it. I've given apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And, and this church knows how many people we parade across this platform that fulfill all of those offices and every one of them speak with the same voice same same spirit we stand on a very high we stand on very high ground talking to you right now right out of the holies of holies it's time you say forget your ideas your ideas don't count i know all your teachers told you your ideas count they don't count People want to say they want to have the mind of Christ. They're not, willing to, they're not willing to stop with their own mind. As long as you're willing to be satisfied walking in your own mind, in your own understanding, you'll never have the mind of Christ. The day that you say, no longer am I making my own decisions. No longer am I walking in my own mind and understanding. No longer am I making my decisions out of the realms of, of the imaginations. Father, I want to hear your voice. And you start living by the word. You start living by basic commitments to him. Just basic commitments. Jesus said the kingdom's first. Above everything else, the kingdom is first. Seeking his kingdom and his righteousness. That's fundamentally expressed in your activity of cooperating with what the Holy Spirit is doing in the midst of the church. Being raised up, being instructed, being taught the words, word of God and the ways of God. Doing your homework in the kingdom. Valuing the things of the Spirit. So that you can find yourself ultimately brought to a place to be sent out to go everywhere doing the same thing because if there's any great need right now it's for people anointed with the Holy Ghost to preach the word in America the Lord recently showed me that there's a new kind of a new kind of hate that's rising up I used to sit around listening to the old guys talk when I was a little guy about how that we would be hated by all nations for his namesake, and that ain't happened yet, and it hadn't happened yet. But they would talk about, we see the rise of it in humanism. But now, something is happening that they didn't understand. Actually, the secular community is getting the right to hate the church because from within the church, the church is declaring that homosexuality is okay, that being drunk on alcohol is okay. And all these other things. So now the secular world is being able to say, see, there are a bunch of hate mongers. There are a bunch of, there are a bunch of haters. There are a bunch of narrow-minded people that believe that there's only one way. And if it's not the way that they're saying it, it's got to be, then you're not right with God. What's going to happen is what the, the rise of this new hatred is going to drive people to Jesus. There ain't no place for you to go. But why don't we just, why don't we just come to him? Why don't we just come to him and, 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 and possibly turn back the tide? Why don't we just come to him and, 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 and see some great event happen? 
where this, where, where, where this nation would have a great demonstration of his power and of his glory. But that's going to happen because you're going to allow his glory to flow through you. And that's not going to happen because you just sit around your couch. Or just waiting, shrugging your shoulders. Well, God, when you ever get around to it, you know I'm available. Nonsense. You're going to press into this realm. You're going to hunger and thirst for it. It's free, but it isn't cheap. It's as sacred. The holies of holies is as sacred as it's ever been. The things of God is as sacred as it's ever been. The defiance and the rebellion that sits in the church today. Father's going to shake it loose. The proud looks. Father's going to shake it loose. Father's going to shake it loose. He's going he's to glorify his only begotten son. He's more earnest about glorifying the name of his only begotten son than I am. And then I, I know it's like a fire shut up in my bones. I know the passion that's burning in me. Yeah, it's love, 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 but it's wrath, wrath, wrath. It's they that believe shall be saved, but they that do not believe shall be damned. And everybody's wanting to call people to salvation. It's time to call people to repentance. And I'm calling people in this place to repentance. I'm believing God that you're going to come into such a submission to the Lord Jesus Christ that the same Holy Ghost conviction that was able to move in this, in this nation 100 years ago will be able to move through you be able to move in this place Come on now. but for that to happen you've got to live that kind of life you've got to live in that Holy Ghost conviction tomorrow yeah. Tuesday yes, all throughout the day because there's no pretend there's no lie there's no mixture with God right. it's truth it's truth it's true. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's time that Jesus be glorified in the midst of his people. time that he began, began to be revealed in the midst of his church. Amen. It's time that the Holy Spirit has the right to do what he's always done. For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone. It's time. It's time that we get hungry and thirsty. It's time we start living for him. Pretends over. Pretends over. Because yes. the light's going to make manifest. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for the anointing that breaks off every yoke. Thank you, Lord, for the mighty moving of your Holy Spirit through our lives. Thank you, Father, for the fire heaven that burns within our soul. Father, thank you for the fire of heaven that burns within your church. Oh, for what is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the fire that burns up the chaff. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word, of your spirit. It begins to flow like a mighty river. Father, we thank you that whole households will begin to come under the influence of the shakings 
of the presence of a holy God. Father, I thank you. Whole households and then neighborhoods will come under the grip of a conviction, of a fear of the living God to where that nobody can take on their life as usual. Father, we thank you that you're going to do these things through our lives. Tonight, we recognize right in this place you're doing it through our lives if we're willing to cooperate. Yes. If we're willing to participate, all these things you do through us, for you have commanded it so, yes. that out of our lives would full, flow forth the issues of heaven. Hallelujah. That you would walk in the midst of us, live out your life through us. Tonight, Father, we repent, we recognize where we've lived our lives for ourselves, we've done it our own way. We've held back. We've not been willing to completely release ourselves to release the things of our lives to you so that you may live in us and be seen to live in us. So, Father, we thank you that you give every person in this place wisdom and insight to release all that they've held on to, to let it go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', in Jesus name. Mangadasatea, Shiki and Galasatea. Likasa Talada da Basisa Hara. Sikatara da Basisa Hara. O Rama Moko Sikara da Batea. Biarmosokurama Mamasi Hitler. O Rama Mamma Mandelibri. O Rama Mamma 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 Jesus, my everything, Lord Jesus, my everything, oh Lord Jesus, my Holy Ghost and 
Father 
Do it now. Do it now, Father. Your kingdom with power. Your kingdom with power. Do it now, Father. Do it now. Your kingdom, oh God, with power. With a demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power. Do it now, Father. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We bow before the throne. We recognize, oh God, that you are God. And there is no other. We bow before you, Jesus. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Fall on me. Let your fire fall. Fire fall on me. Let your fire fall. Your fire fall on me. Oh God, let your fire fall. Let your fire fall on me. Fall on me. Let your fire fall on me. Let your fire fall on me. Baptize me. No longer to live for ourselves, O oh God, but to live for your glory. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus. I carabava la vasi pra mama mandombla da kiri mama andala de si prata. O God. There is a river that's flowing out of our lives. This river of Jesus Christ. The river of God. River of God flow out of me. This life, this life abundantly. There is a river flowing out of me. This river of the Spirit. The life of Jesus, this life of Jesus, reveal your Son in me, Lord, reveal your Son in me, this life of Jesus. This life of Jesus, river of God, flow out of me. River of God, flow out of me. This life of Jesus, this abundant life of Jesus. Father, we know and believe that you are. Hallelujah. We know and believe that you are here. 
Do wonders, God. Do wonders, Lord. Oh, Ramama Manchisa. Do wonders. Do wonders, Lord. Do wonders. Do wonders. Oh, God, do wonders. Do signs and wonders. Do wonders. Just pour out your heart to him. Do wonders. Just tell him. Do wonders. Lord, do wonders. Yeah, just go, that's it. Just go ahead and let that voice, lift up that voice. Do wonders. Is there another song you Is there another, is there another song that you were going to do? Is there another song? Oh, it's your blood that cleanses me. Oh, it's your blood that gave me your life. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Oh, it's your blood that cleanses me. Oh, Lord, it's, it's your, your blood that, that gave me your life. Oh, it's your blood that cleanses me. Oh, it's your blood that gave me your life. Thank you for your blood that cleanses me. I thank you for your blood that gave me your life. Lord, I thank you for your blood that, that cleanses me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your blood. That 
Assurance of faith. I will draw near. I will draw near. Lord, we're not living for ourselves anymore. We're living for your glory. Lord, we're not living for ourselves anymore. We're living for your glory. Lord, we're not living for ourselves anymore. Lord, we're living for your glory. We're not living for ourselves anymore. We're living for your glory. Not living our own life. We're not living our own life. We're living the life you gave. We're not living our own life. We're not living our own life. We're living the life you gave. We're not living our own life. 
We're not living our own life. We're living the life you gave. We're not living for ourselves anymore. <laughs> We're living for your glory. I want you to be seated. And I want you to hear a call of God upon your life. I want you to hear the Lord Jesus Christ calling you just like he called Peter. Just like he called Andrew. Just like he called John and James. I want, you to, I want you to hear him call you tonight. And I want you to respond the same way that he did. Every person in this place, there is a great call of God upon your life. There is a call to his greatness. Yes. Uh, uh, to live his life is to live a life of greatness. Uh -huh. there, is, there is no one held back from the life of faith. A divine power, divine authority. You know, John was well taken care of, and all he had was a camel's uh, coat and a leather girdle. And he was good. He was good. In fact, he was better than good. He's far more famous than the richest man that ever lived. I don't know who that, that person's name is, but I know John's name. Oh, hallelujah. Elijah basically had the same it's amazing. doesn't matter what generation they live in. God's people act and look the same. Though the life of Elijah was separated by 600 years from John, they acted so much alike. Same basic anointing. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus has given us his anointing. Tonight, we don't have to just... Be limited to thinking, well, well, we have the anointing that Elijah had or that John had. We, got, we have the anointing of the Son, the only begotten Son. We got, oh, God. We got the anointing of the only begotten Son of God. We've been given the place of sonship, the authority of sonship, the call of greatness is upon everyone in here. Tonight, all you have to do is simply begin to look at and deal with the things that have been holding you back. And it's not really that big of a deal. It's self. And it's not hard to deal with self. See, Father's not just interested in faithfulness. He's interested in faithfulness to live, living the life that He purchased for us at Calvary. See, the Scripture says we have purified our souls by obeying the truth. To unfeigned love of the brethren. There is a way and a manner of life that God wants us to live. I mean, he's made it so simple. He said you can know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. I want you to just consider how simple the Lord has made it. The biggest obstacle that you and I face in our life is being faithful to our own selves. Father doesn't, want, Father doesn't want us to be faithful to our own selves and our own interests. People are involved in a lot of religious activities, being faithful to their own self and their own interest. Because it, it makes them feel better about themselves. It makes them feel better about themselves to go feed some people in a soup line on Thanksgiving. Or whatever other religious things that people do. Father wants us to be faithful to living the life that he purchased for us at Calvary. That Father God went through a, I mean, I'm telling you, you talk about getting broken. You talk about being busted. You talk, there is no one who loves as deeply as the Father. And no one can be hurt so deeply as that one who loves so deeply. The deeper you love, the deeper you're going to get hurt. That's just the reality of it is. Everyone knows it. That's why a lot of people try to protect themselves from loving too deep because they can't handle getting hurt that deep. But nobody's love like Father's love. And His love towards His only begotten Son cannot even be expressed or understood in this earthly frame. But He was willing to see Him crucified and bruised. He was willing to watch Him get rejected. He was willing to watch Him be spit upon. He was willing to watch these people speak all manner of evil against Him. Oh, how that, how that had to outrage Father's heart. 
how that had to break Father's heart because I'm a dad and I know how protective I am of my children. And, um, and especially when, you know, especially when they've done what's right and they, they, they've obeyed and they've given my, 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 it is a great challenge and a great expense for a preacher's child who already feels like they are on the front line of criticism to give themselves to the ministry in the church to have people, you know, rail on them and find another problem with them and find, I mean, come on now. And you think about how it went to a whole nother level with Father having to watch the way that his only begotten son was treated, but he was willing to do it so that you and I could receive his life. And I'm telling you right now, it is a no little deal to him. It's a big deal to him. It isn't some small expense. It was a great expense to him. And he demands a faithfulness to live in that life that he purchased for us, that he's given to us. And it's, so, it's such a blessing how merciful he is in it. And, and you know, and I think that one of the most important things, people, that you've got to recognize is you've got to make sure that you keep your heart with all diligence because there's a lot of wrong models out there. There's a lot of people saying things that are clearly contrary to the Word of God. It's not calling you into this life, and you're going to have to stop your ears and keep your heart from it. And you're the Holy Spirit calling you into this place of intimacy and relationship with the Lord Jesus. So I, I, tonight, I'm, I'm just going to underscore, I mean, I, I want to move over here into this other dimension of, of, of something that the Lord has laid upon my heart. But if there's anything that we have got to wrap our hearts around as God's call to us to cease from our own works to begin to do His works, to cease from our own life to begin to live His life. It's not common. It's not ordinary. It doesn't fit in. It's supernatural. It's powerful. It's heavenly. There's nothing earthly about it. It's, it's exploits. It's the greatest life you could possibly ever live. It's a, one, it's a one of greatness. It's a one of being a champion for God. It's one of living not beneath anything that Abraham did or Elijah, but living the life that Jesus lived. That's the one he's called us to. And the biggest, once again, the biggest thing that you and I have to deal with is our own self-interest. The, the challenges that we have as Father would teach us not to live in our own self-interest is to submit ourselves to His authority. Father expects us to submit ourselves to the authority that is raised up within governmental ranks, as it were, that are there not for those who do righteous, but for the evildoer. How much more does God expect us to submit ourselves to the authority of the church? Today, people don't even recognize who the authorities are in the church. They think because, well, a person's got a church of so many numbers, then they're the authorities. God has mouthpieces on the earth. It's not hard to recognize them or identify them uh, because they're speaking after his word. And it's real easy for you because you guys are in the right kind of church. You're in a church where we're not making merchandise out of you. We're not here for any other reason but to see you raised up and everything that Christ Jesus described in the Word. That's it. You're not here for our own gain. You're not here for our own purpose. You're here for one reason, and that is to take a hold of this blessed life that has been provided for us in Christ Jesus. That's all we're calling you to do. This is what we have to wrestle with people about continually. Here, here is an assembly of people that God's called into His greatness, assembly of people. That as God has given an unlimited possibility, an unlimited authority, and the biggest challenge is, is everyone does what's right in his own eyes. You're going to have to stop that. The American way is in the heavenly way. The way of independence is in God's way. God places us under authority, places us under those people that we are going to give, our, give, a, uh, give an account to, to be accountable. It's a very good thing. <laughs> This is hard for people who've been raised in church to even begin to deal with. We have to see a whole new crop of folks, by and large, raised up out of obscurity and brought into the kingdom of God in the right way for them to be able to get it. Because so many people that have been raised in church, their heart is hardened. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about a hardened heart. And I'm going to talk to you about the cure of a hardened heart. And I don't want you to feel... Aloof from God, I want you to understand there's a place that you can become tender towards Him. There's a place where you can become ever so sensitive towards Him. I had people come up 
last Sunday night and say, you know, I just want to be sensitive towards God. Well, good. He wants you to be sensitive. In fact, that's why he gave you a new heart, so you could be sensitive. It's terrible that you've been eating the wrong food that's giving you a hardening of the arteries, a hardened heart, which is worse than hardening of the arteries. Really, the hard heart that John, that forgive me, that Mark focuses on, and, you know, we believe that Mark actually wrote on the behalf of Peter. So uh, let me just say to you, sometime do yourself a great uh, service and just sit under Peter's ministry for like two or three months. Just, in other words, only read those things which Peter wrote or that are ascribed to Peter, which would be the first and second epistles of Peter. They would be, uh, um, they would be uh, the Gospel of Mark. And then a few short sermons in the book of Acts. Just sit under Peter's ministry and get what he got from Jesus. Because I'm telling you right now, he got raised up by a great teacher. And then he got baptized in the Holy Ghost and given a powerful position of authority in the church. And we really want to listen to him. And God's made a way where we can actually sit his, at his feet and, and receive from his ministry. Because the Holy Ghost hooks up with first and second epistles of Peter and Mark and starts telling us what Peter understood of the gospel as he relates to us the very life of uh, Christ Jesus and the commandments of God. You can do the same thing with John. Of course, it takes a little bit more time because John's got the gospel of John, first and second and third epistle of John and the book of Revelation. But my goodness, by the time you sit under his ministry for about six months, your life has changed. You think different. People start telling you stuff about God and God's will for your life. And these scriptures will start going off in your mind saying, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't fit into all these things that, that, the, that the Apostle Peter said. That doesn't fit into all these things that the Apostle John said. That doesn't fit in, into all these things that Christ Jesus, our Savior, said. And so I, I want to I I bring you into a place of sensitivity. I want you, I want to bring you, I want to tell you, it's easy for you to become very sensitive to God. First and foremost, he worked a work of, of a miracle to give, take away the stony heart, to give you a heart of flesh so it can be so sensitive. But this is going to cost you because you don't get to be your own person anymore. You have to ask permission for everything you do. Now, I know we're getting real quiet now because people don't want to do that. They don't, they don't do that. They want to live their own life. I mean, if you can begin to ask the Holy Ghost for permission, Lord, is it all right if I buy that? Lord, it, Holy Spirit, is it all right if I eat this? Lord, I, I want you, you know, I, if you go out to eat with me, man, I am telling you right now, I spent too much time thinking about the issues related to uh, microbiology and bacteria and all the stuff that's going down out there. So I say, Father, I thank you that food is sanctified by your word and by prayer. So therefore, bless our bread and bless our water and take sickness and disease out of our midst. I'm asking him. There are sometimes, you know, I start to eat something and boom, I start praying in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost making intercession for me. I recognize I shouldn't be eating that. I was with a bunch of missionaries one time and we were out in the outback of Australia and they had brought out this food and it was, it was kangaroo and it's supposed to have been uh, cooked right and everybody was all excited about it. So I went to get it and the Lord said, no. And I said, there's death in the pot. It's poisonous. And Rodney started to take a bite. And I looked at him. I said, no. I got radical. No, not eat that. You can't eat that. And everybody's, oh, you know, you're supposed to eat what's set in front of you. Where's your faith? I, know, I, listen, I got discernment. I got insight. Okay? That's where my faith is. And the preacher's sitting over there making fun of us and just mocking away. Rodney, listen to me. He heard. He heard. I, I got radical. He said, well, okay. Then I'm, I won't eat it. <laughs> the folks was over there. Oh, you're supposed to eat what's set in front of you and where your faith. They were sick for two, three weeks coming out both ends. And they were supposed to go down the meeting with us. They were up in Darwin, and they were going to go because it was going to be a first ever that, that international people were allowed to come in to the land of the Pitanjaras, which is a particular people group in the outback of Australia. They didn't get to come. They ate the kangaroo. It's a wonderful thing to just begin to talk about to Father. Ask permission. I've always had people around me. I ask permission. What do you think about this? 
You know, when I recognize a man of God in my life, I say, listen, what I'm feeling to do this. What do you feel about it? I've watched too many people live their own life, come up with their own judgment, whatever they think is good. That just seems like they have no boundaries. Hey, it's good to have no boundaries inside of a flowing in the anointing, but you need to learn boundaries with respect to respect and a recognition of authority. Huh? Because what we're talking about is getting sensitive to God. Getting sensitive to God and His presence and being sensitive to His Word. Being sensitive to obey Him, to do what He says. Because really what causes hardness of the heart is unbelief. It's doubt. It's unbelief. You can't hear it. You can't get it. You're just going, no way, this really can't be happening. And that's where the disciples were. They're going, no way, this can't be happening. So I'm going to walk you through some of these verses of Scripture. Are you ready? Okay, so open up your Bibles with me in Mark chapter 6 to begin with. Everybody tell me when you're there. Two people are there. Three more people are there. Anybody else there? Uh-huh. Everybody's there? Well, let me find out where there is. Because I'm not seeing very well tonight. I don't even need to know. I don't even hardly know people's names. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to carry this around. I'm going to bring this down here. You're going to hold this for me. Because if you might want to keep track, I'm trying to remember Mark 6:52 tonight. I mean, I know the verses of Scripture. I want you to go and turn and look at them with me. Mark 8, 17. Mark 10, 5. Okay, so everybody's got to remember where we're at. Mark 16, 14. Okay? And baby, you hold this down. Hold this for me because you're the good memory. Here's my memory over here. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, Jesus comes walking on the water. Now... I understand this is one miracle after the next miracle after the next miracle. Okay, we've done, we've, we just, we fed 5,000 people with five loaves and a few fishes. Okay, that's huge. And it's not like that they were allowed to just sit there and watch. The Lord involved them in the miracle and he broke the bread and he handed it to them. And they went and broke the bread and they handed it to the people. So they were actually actively a part of the miracle. But they didn't get it. Now, look here. These guys are doing well. They've left everything that they have. They've left their families and everything to come follow the Lord Jesus. And they're not getting it. They're so steeped in an earthly life. They're so steep in there's no way that this could possibly be happening. They're so steep in thinking and reasoning after a natural realm of the limitations of, look, Five loaves and a few fishes don't feed 5,000 people, not counting men and women. So when it's happening, it's really hard to step over there because the realm of the life of the Spirit is still not anything that they're really connecting with. It's, it's, that's, the, that's the worst part about living for yourself. Living in the realm of self. The realm of self keeps you attached to an earthly, limited realm to where that you got to figure it all out. You've got to live by your own strength or you live by your own ability. And God's saying, no, 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 no. I want to teach you another realm. There's a heavenly realm. There's an earthly realm. And there's a heavenly realm. There's a realm of the self. And then there's the realm of the unlimited realm of the spirit. And so here Jesus, after we get finished with one miracle, big deal. So we're going to another miracle. It's not like it's uncommon because Jesus just lives in this realm. And now this one, he just so happens to be walking on the water, okay? So we see in verse 48, and they saw, and they were out towing, rowing on the water. The wind was contrary to them. But verse 49 says that, um, and, and, and with 48 rather, it says, And the fourth watch of the night, he came unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed that it had been a spirit, and they freaked out. Uh, in modern terminology, they freaked out. They began to scream. Ah! They cried out. And um, this, was a, this was a living horror movie to them at that moment in time. And For they, they all saw him and were troubled. 
And immediately he talked to them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, don't be afraid, it's me. And he went up into them into the ship. And when they went into the ship, the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed. And themselves beyond measured, measure and wondered. And this is, the, this is the response that we constantly get of people. It's very hard to participate when you're sore amazed and you're wondering. They ain't sensitive to nothing but that they are afraid and they can't even believe this is happening. And did, I, did, did he just do what we thought? And did, who, what men are men is this? Did even the wind and the wave respond to him? Here's what Jesus said. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. They couldn't remember that just earlier in the day, he gave them five loaves, broke it up between those 12 boys. It wasn't enough to feed them for starters. And a few fishes, it wasn't enough. They, they still are just going, what on earth? They haven't broken yet. They haven't, they haven't got a hold of the miracle to where that they've broken and collapsed. And oh my God, this is a miracle. But Christ Jesus, God Almighty, standing here in our midst. Heaven has come to earth. Uh huh? Huh? Anybody feel like you're in good company now? Yeah. 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 And the bigger thing is what we're going to do about this situation here. So go with me to Mark chapter eight. Mark chapter eight. Just tell me, baby. Mark chapter eight, verse seven. Seventeen. Oh Jesus. So Jesus is ministering to them, and he's trying to tell, tell them, you know, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Herodians. And they don't get it. You know, here, this is, here's a laughable thing. This will this make you laugh if you, later on. But think about it right now. This will make you laugh later on. Here Jesus is dealing with people about their souls. He's telling them what's keeping them back from moving with God and being the people that God has called them to be. He's laying it out to them. He's reproving them. And, they, and, and you know what they do? They go, well, your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. It's like he had to start busting up laughing at that moment. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. He's talking to them about, about abundant life, eternal life, things that they got to be changed. And all they can think of is you don't wash before you eat. We are brilliant. <laughs> our dialogues that go on with the Lord, our means to try to justify ourselves is beyond all reckoning. Brilliant. These are the brilliant people of their day. They are lost for words. The Lord's trying to bring them to repentance and all they can say is you don't wash your hands before you eat. <laughs> well, if that's the best you can come up, I know Jesus laughed, we'll find out later. I could see him just laughing. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Okay, so this is similar because he's telling them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and, of the, of, and the leaven of Herod or the Herodians. He's trying to help them deal with religion. He's trying to get them prepared for some of the things that they've got to face. And all they can do is, what on earth is he talking about now? Leaven. He must be saying, he must be saying that he's upset with us because we didn't bring any bread. We didn't bring food. I told you, Peter, that you were supposed to get some. There was 12 baskets left, and I told you we needed that for later. No, you didn't tell me. I heard you tell Andrew, but you didn't tell me. You got, your memory's not working. You know how it goes back and forth. Just name, same, way, same name calling, same finger pointing. Jesus is going, guys, don't you remember? Can't, don't you remember? Who's concerned about bread? Don't you remember the five loaves and the 5,000? Don't you remember the seven loaves and the 4,000? And how many baskets took up after everybody ate? Twelve baskets full. Can't you remember the 5,000 basketfuls after the, after the, seven, after the 4,000 ate? And they couldn't remember. You know why they couldn't remember? Because uh, he says, Don't you understand? Have you yet your heart still hardened? Okay, so he's really dealing with the reality of when are you going to get out of a natural reliance? 
a continual relying upon what you can do, a continual relying upon uh, natural things, a continual relying upon your own human ability and step over into a miracle realm and recognize we can pull this out of thin air. Huh? You're worried about not bringing any bread. We don't need any bread. We can get it right out of the realms of heaven right now. We don't need any money. Go catch a fish. We'll get all the money we need right out of its mouth. It's a challenge living in a human, earthly realm filled with self-interest to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost, to be tender towards Him. You're going not to be willing now to begin to obey the Word of God in very practical, fundamental, practical ways. You're going to have to be sensitive not to hurt other people's feelings. You're going to have to be sensitive to love people when they hate you. You're going to have to be sensitive to bless people when, when they persecute you. You're going to have to be sensitive to walking over in joy and, and doing the basic things that God has called you to do within the framework of denying yourself. You feel sad? Well, you don't have time to be sad. Get happy. God said for you to be happy. He said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. This is real simple stuff. And I, I don't think that there's any better place of application than you and I being willing to rule our own lives and spirits with being happy. Who doesn't want to be happy? Who doesn't want to be happy? Everybody get happy right now. Just look happy right now. Most people are willing to be obedient. My mother used to say, listen to me. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't care if it's middle of July. If I said for you to stand on your head and start spitting snowballs, you better start standing and start spitting. Why, Mama? Because I expect absolute obedience. Would his father expect absolute obedience? You purify your souls in obeying the truth. Does father expect absolute obedience? Absolutely. He absolutely does. Because there's no room. For you to give a place to disobedience. Otherwise, something's going to destroy your soul. It's going to get an advantage on you. Satan is a master of his crowd. He's going to deceive you. He's going to pull you away from everything that God paid such a high price for you to have. You just got to have a simple understanding. Father says, I want you to make a shift. Uh, you're no longer a natural man. You're no longer an earthly man. I made you a spiritual man. To now walk and move in a spiritual realm where miracles are common, ordinary to you. You can be sensitive towards God now. You can start moving in faith. Jesus, you'll find Jesus dealing with the disciples, rebuking them for their unbelief. Saying, how long must I suffer you, God? You cannot even get it. Doesn't matter how many miracles works. I work. You can't get it. Towards the end of his ministry, he says, I'm so glad that Lazarus died. So I can go raise him from the dead to the end that you could believe. Wow, he's talking to, the, he's talking to the, the boys who had left everything. But the boys still don't get it yet. Because the boys, the boys haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. The boys haven't learned to live by the Spirit yet. The boys are captivated by Him. They're very faithful. They're very loyal. They're willing to sacrifice everything. I mean, you know, look at Thomas. You know, they're going to go raise Lazarus from the dead. Thomas, okay, let's go die with him. Well, bless his heart. Bless his heart, he's willing to lay down his life. All he can think is, we're going to die. Let's go die with him. They're going to kill us. When we go over there, they're going to kill us. He's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Actually, Lazarus is sleeping and he does well. You ought to leave him alone. But he's going to go over there, so let's go die. This is what Jesus had to work with. <laughs> That's what helps us because we can look at, out at the, at the champions of the faith and go, my goodness. You know, all it's going to take is a Holy Ghost encounter, and this whole thing's going to be turned around. And uh, so all of a sudden, God's people are going to start moving in miracles and supernatural faith because I see it all over you. I see miracles and signs and wonders all over you, Geneva, because you just stayed with it. You stayed with the program. You've not backed down. You've not let up. People just think, well, I'm going to show up, and, you know, and, and, and then it's just all going to happen. And they just, 
He prepares you unto every good work. You purify your soul and obey the truth to unfading love of the brethren. There's a place he says, if you'll be faithful in a few things, I'll make you ruler over one, many. He gave one pound to ten different servants. And, 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 and one of the servants went after it and got ten pounds out of the one. The other got five pounds. The other, then there was one that said, look, you know what? I knew you were, I was afraid of you. We're all afraid of you. My goodness gracious, you hard and controlling. And unfair. And I just took what was yours because I have other interests. I don't have all my time spent working for you. I put it in a napkin. Here, it's what you gave me. I'll give back to you. The Lord said, take that wicked servant and throw him over to the tormentors. Too much of that goes on. We live in, a, we live in another realm. You can't be sensitive to God there. With total abandonment, you're going to have to give your life. Say, okay, Lord, here's my hands. What can I do? Here's my hands. Here's my feet. Here's my life. I'm serving you. Uh, my, my life is about you. you the master I'm the servant and then after we've done uh, all the things that God has told us to do all the signs wonders miracles he said you I want you to say you unprofitable servants because you've done that which was commanded of you <laughs> you haven't earned nothing you did that which was commanded of you that's right father wants us to there's a breakthrough realm here I'm talking about a breakthrough realm I'm talking about a change of mind a change of thinking I'm, I'm talking about the needs of why you got why you have to persistently and willfully say I'm not conforming to the world I'm not coming under the authority of that fear I'm not living my own life I'm not opting out to do whatever it is I think is convenient for me to do or what I want to do I don't live for what I want to do I live for what he wants me to do. Father, how do we take this thing to another level? How do we press in beyond the place where we've been living? How do we lay hold of that which you've freely given? You start asking Father those questions, he's going to give you some answers. Especially if you open up the Bible and read it for an hour a day. Huh? And, and don't, don't, just, don't just go keep going to the same verses of Scripture. Go ahead and read it an hour a day. Go from Genesis to Revelation. And then when you're done, go ahead and start again because you've got another 90 days coming right up after the end of that 90 days. Praise God. Oh, I'm all worn out. I'm all tired. What is expected of us? I can't believe it. Oh, my goodness. He's putting another heavy load upon us. It's not a heavy load. It's like, come on. What have you been doing with your time anyway? What kind of life have you been living? It's all about self. It's all about the realm of human ability. God said, cursed is that man. gives us a sensitive heart that we may know him that maybe we may respond to him that we may obey him you have to be born of the spirit before you're ever going to before you're ever the, uh, going to value the things of the spirit before the things of the holy ghost are ever going to be meaningful to you before the heaven, heavenly life is ever going to be meaningful to you you have to be born of the spirit once you're born of the spirit man you latch on man i just had fire i just had wind and fire i just had a rushing mighty wind and clothed in tongues of fire my goodness gracious i just felt the power of god search through my body I was just out baptizing people for how many how many times have I baptized people how many hundreds of people have I baptized we baptized about 15 people today how many hundreds of how many, literally it's in the thousands of thousands of people because I mean when I go and do a crusade I'm baptizing people it's thousands of people I don't know I'm even kept track I mean there's been many and today just doing faithfully what I've been doing today I got to be a spectator I got to listen to people talk to father I was so I was so overcome with the heavenly realm that all you could liken to me when I got out of the out of the water was a drunken man. I was barely able. I was barely able to walk. I was just. I was out there. I was so demanding. I was trying my best to get to change my clothes. I was just. I was trying my very best to look sober and to look respectable. But I, I'm telling you, inside, I was like, ooh, I was, ooh, this is beautiful. This is glorious. I'm gone. I'm in the heavenly realm. Ha, ha, ha. I'm laughing. I'm giddy. I'm like, come on. We don't need any food. We don't need supper. Let's go back to church. No, honey, you wet. You got to get some dry clothes. You can't preach in your warm-ups. Because there's a realm that you step into you don't want to step out of. I'm telling you right now, and then nobody's going to be bored in heaven. Uh -huh. Oh, I wanted to mean I was bored. You, you, and because it's another realm. You're in a realm, a heart, a heart, a place where you can't be sensitive to things of the Spirit. Father wants to change that. But it's an act of your participation, and it's an act of your will. 
It says it's, your, it's where you begin to mind spiritual things, where you begin to recognize what? Wait a minute. His word is a place of communion with him. It isn't just some religious activity so that I can memorize some verses of scripture or do a religious thing. It's an interaction with him. I get to sit at his feet. I get to listen to him. His word is spirit and his light. There's something happening in the, in the dialogue. I'm telling you right now, stay with it 20 years from now. It's gonna, you're going to open up the Bible and fall out of your chair. I, I promise you, you'll open up the Bible. <laughs> the glory of God. I mean, because you become sensitive. Being around him, being in another realm, not being aloof, not being far away from him, not being off in an earthly place when he's in a heavenly place. It's impossible. I'm going to take the extreme. It's impossible for the natural man to receive anything from God. It is so impossible because the natural man's going, looking at the glory, the power, the splendor, the eternal beauty of God and saying foolishness that is really that is really worlds apart isn't it looking at the splendor and the majesty of God and going foolishness that's the extreme huh now what happens is the Lord brings us over into this place and said I want to teach you to walk in the spirit I want to teach you to walk in heaven in other words walking in the spirit is walking in heaven but walking in the spirit is a synonym for walking in heaven how many of you know that you've been seated together with him in a heavenly realm? You've been brought up into a heavenly realm. How many of you know that right now you have your lifestyle in heaven? You know where the verses of scripture are. Everybody knows where the scriptures are. Okay, but, okay give, just, so give me one of them. One of the verses of scripture. Okay, that's Ephesians 2, 6. Where's the other one? I'll give you a hint. Philippians. You want me to give you the chapter? Go ahead. Come on, give it to me. 320. Come on. Because the word of God is in you. Because the word of God is in you. Now you're able to be sensitive. To say, wait a minute, this is who I am. This is my identity. This is my purpose. I've, I've lived a life of people around me giving me an earthly identity, limiting me, pigeonholing me, telling me who I am, what I can and cannot do. And here God has come and given me this great declaration of who I am in Him. But if I don't know anything about it, if I don't participate, I'm never going to be sensitive to it. <laughs> Dear people, you need the Word of God in you. Oh, my, you, I was born of the Word to be able to learn the Word, to understand the Word, to retain the Word. I wasn't born of the Word to say I don't need the Word. <laughs> Though God's Word was written upon the tables of my heart and in my mind so that I could understand and learn and relate and want and hunger and thirst. Man, I'm telling you right now, my mama started reading the Gospels, the miracles of Jesus to me before I was old enough to understand what she was saying. And when I read them today, the hair still stands up on the back of my neck. Because it's an entirely spiritual realm and it's nothing to do with the intellect. I now I actually get transported there. I feel myself there. I can I can smell the air. I can feel the effect. Something's happening to me. There's no distance in time and space. It's like a miracle takes me to that place and I watch Jesus do the work. I become sensitive. It doesn't happen just because you showed up to the meeting. It doesn't happen just because you called upon the name of the Lord and was saved. You purify your souls in obedience to the truth and the unfeigned love of the brethren. Huh? See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. There is an outworking of the reality that God has changed you. All of a sudden, you have the same demeanor and disposition and nature of him as he does. And too many people give their self to hate and various manifestations of hate. Strife is a manifestation of hate. Bickering is a manifestation of hate. Arguing is a manifestation of hate. And is championed by self-interest and hurt and pride. Yeah. Speaking evil of other people. A manifestation of hate. It's a dimension of cursing. To start running somebody down is to curse them. Yeah. It's to take up the very nature of Satan who accuses the brethren before God night and day. Revelation 12, 8. Think about it. You can't be sensitive when you've given yourself over to that unholy realm. You can't be sensitive to the realms of God because the only way you're going to be sensitive to Him is if you stay in His love and you begin to believe His Word and you begin to live by His Word. He didn't give His Word for us for intellectual purposes. It doesn't. You don't open up the first page and it says FYI <laughs> for information purposes only or for your information. 
He, this is the living word for you and I to live by it. Man doesn't live by, I mean, man doesn't live by bread alone. You know how much you live by bread? Stop eating it for a while and you'll realize how much you live by it. Go on a fast. You'll find out how weak you are. I believe God's people need to fast for long periods of time so then they can get something about denying themselves. Stomach growls and you run to the table. Huh? If you're me, it's like, and feed me. Huh? True. People, we've got to understand that there is a realm to where that God would call us into his presence to now minister before him, to live out his life under his dictates. He's the master, we the servants. And it's a good place. And ultimately, he's raising us up to be kings and rule together with him as heirs of God and co-laborers and co-inheritors. And I can't even imagine that. And when we see him, we should be like him, for we should see him as he is. I can't even imagine that. And that's what he's done. And then I should take such an unspeakable gift and just basically you know, act, shrug my shoulders and act like it's just ordinary and be more interested in fixing up my fishing pole. Be more interested in polishing my gun barrel, waxing my snowboard, praying for snow, and prayed for souls all year. But I'm begging God for a for a for a, a Arctic vortex. Are you listening to me? You ain't gonna be sensitive to nothing but you. The more you give yourself to yourself, the more sensitive you are to yourself, and the more easily you are hurt, and the more easily you are offended, the more reason you easily you are upset about everything. Praise God in Jesus' name. I'm going to find every one of your bush buttons and push them all the time. I'm going to push them until they don't work no more. I'm pushing every button I can find on you. So I can point out how selfish and how self-centered and how you live in your own life. Amen. I'm going to push every self button until they don't work anymore. <laughs> Only the Jesus buttons work. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just wait till you say, yeah, I like how he's talking to me. Just wait till God talks to you. <laughs> and then it's too late. He said, I don't know who you are. You didn't listen. You lived a rebel. You died a rebel. You'll spend being a rebel forever. Ain't no rebels here. You live defiant. You die defiant. You spend where in eternity with every defiant person. People, God's called. I, I tell you right now, the more the more you walk with the Lord, the more you get desperate about saying, "Lord, cause me to walk in humility. Cause me to walk in a greater love, a greater laying down of my life, a greater servitude, huh? a greater compassion towards people." People, these things, God makes us sensitive towards them because we participate with them. Otherwise, we're just caught up in our own sensual realm. We're caught up in our own need realm. We're caught up saying, like, who's the greatest? Look, we all left. Look, I left first, though. Well, big deal. I heard him before you heard him. I was with John. I told you about him. That's the argument going on among the disciples. Huh? About who's greatest. Who's number uno. Who's number one. Who's first. They're all just, they're all, you know, you can see them following Jesus, and they're all, like, shoving one another in the line. I should be right behind them. You need to get behind me. And people say, no, that's not true, guys. Come on. These are 22-year-old, 23-year-old, I mean, 30-year-olds. Give me a break. I know what they were doing. You know why? Because everybody's a bunch of look alike and act alike. It's just the way it is. I know what your problem is. I went through it, too. Huh? I know what your challenges are. Jesus went through them. Huh? He showed us how to defeat every one of them, how to live only for God, how to deny everything. He said, I didn't come to live my own life, man. I've come, I, I, you, I'm trying to communicate something to you, Jesus is saying. I come to show you how to live the life. I come to show you how to do the will of the Father. This is how it works. Uh, now, all the, all, uh, everyone who was used by the Father to declare those things which Jesus has, has come to minister to us told us, as Paul said, don't be conformed to this world. Be conformed, brother, to the image of the Son. Hallelujah. You need to find yourself in prayer meeting. Jesus had a great miracle service. Then they go and sit down and start, you know, you know, have, you know, food after the meeting. 
sit around and talk about the favorite movie and wow wasn't that a great thing did you see that miracle wow i'm telling you man yeah these miracles are increasing whoa we're getting they're getting big and bad in the kingdom he went apart into a place in in a mountain to pray all night wow jesus wow did you have to do that Ooh, all night you didn't get any sleep did you have to do that no no he's living in another realm he wanted to do that he's called he did the better thing than sleeping Sleeping is boring, huh? <laughs> sitting around, sit, sit, sitting around, sitting around, eating and talking about how great you are. Boring. You never come and stepped over into this realm of divine glory. You do. You'll pray all night. But until then, it just sounds like some weird activity. I mean, just some freakish cultic-like thing. That's weird. Why were you so long in the meeting? What's going on over there? That's weird. The natural man says, that's weird. It's foolishness. The self realm doesn't understand the miracle realm, doesn't know, understand how to cooperate with the miracle realm because the self realm re continually relies on self. And if we got a need here, we're going to have to run to the store. Jesus said, you guys feed them, knowing in himself what he was going to do, just checking them out, trying them out, testing them out. That's what the scripture says. Knowing in himself what he was going to do, he said, give them to eat. And they look, they, you can see the expression. I see the expression all the time as a pastor. Well, you got to be kidding me, man. You're taking up another offering? Don't you under, what on earth? See, it's a total natural realm. It hasn't stepped over into the spiritual realm yet. What on earth? What do you expect? Do you know, I've been calculating how much money I've given since I've come here. And I've been calculating how much I've been getting back. And it ain't adding up for me. Yeah, the calculating's been keeping you from the miracle. Amen. Amen. All that world of thinking is such a self-interest realm. It imprisons you from the supernatural provision. Are you listening to me? Yes. In fact, if it is, you already said you gave your whole life and that you're willing to go die for him right now. You're willing to go lay down your life. You're willing to go everywhere. You already vowed. You no longer live. It's all about his will. Pretend, pretend. It was all about his will until push comes to shove and he's telling you to do something you don't want to do. Then all of a sudden, we got to have a double check. Wait a minute. Wait, I'm not sure you're hearing from God. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all fine and well so long as it's comfortable and I agree. But just as soon as I disagree, I'm certain it's not God. I don't feel it. Who said anything about you feeling it anywhere in here? Anywhere. Agreeing with it or understanding it. Where does it turn to the chapter, please? Give me the verse. And say that anywhere. Told you to obey. Told me to obey and to do it. God said you purify your soul in obedience to the truth. The word of God is truth. His word is truth. You do what he said to do. There's nothing you're not willing to, to, no place you're not willing to go. And it happens not by, it not, doesn't happen by somebody telling you, you got to go over there and stand on that corner. It just happens in your everyday life as you're going from one place to the next. You're having encounters. You're having opportunities to be used by God. You're making choices all the time, whether or not you're laying down your life or preserving your life. Whether you're going to confess him before men or deny him. It's happening all the time. People get fearful and threatened. Are you going out to the beach now? Are you going to walk through the crowd of people? And we're going to stand there with everybody staring at us? While we're like going out into the water with all of our clothes on? Freaky. Well, it isn't that way when you're caught up in glory. When you're caught up in a heavenly realm doing, your, doing the master's business. Then it's beautiful. It's like, wow, this is amazing. We get to do this? How, like, when are we doing it again? Yeah. Well, as soon as you get about, you know, a few more people together, you, you, got, you got like, you know, if, if by between now and next Sunday, you, be, you, you decide I'm not going to be happy being barren and unfruitful. God's told me to reach the lost, and if I have an anointing that's supposed to be in my life, then I will reach the lost, and they will come into the church. And I'm just simply going, 
not going to be satisfied letting it stand as it is. I'm going to lay hold on God. I'm going to bust through whatever it is that's hindering me because I know it's not God's will for me to be this barren and unfruitful when it comes to reaching the lost. Now, you start doing that, and something's going to start happening and shaking up in the realms of heaven. Something's going to start moving around for you. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to start becoming influential in the realms of the Spirit. People are going to start being changed and transformed by the power God manifested to your life. And we'll have a baptism next Sunday. Amen. Because there'll be another 13, 14, 15 people. Amen. Oh, yeah. And, and Bob is just waiting because he sees his eyelids try, his eyes behold. He knows how much time we're spending on ourselves. He knows what's going on. He sees it. He's not aloof. You know, you cried out and said, God, send the fire. He said, okay, I'll send the fire. You said, okay, God, I want you to use me no matter all what the cost is. He said, okay, let me look at how you're living. You didn't realize. He said, okay, let me just watch you. And he's going, now what are you doing now? You can't hear him because you're insensitive. No, you're not supposed to be doing that. Wait a minute. You're not even supposed what, what, Why? Why are you looking over there? Wait a minute. Huh? I tell you, it was a great breakthrough when you set God before you, and it's an act of your own will. You set God before you, and you put him at your own right hand that, sh that you should not be moved. You want to be sensitive to God? Start obeying him. You want to be sensitive to God? Start minding the things of the Spirit. It isn't about you going, taking off, and doing a mass advantage of some crusades. It's about you getting on your knees and saying, Lord, I, I've never cried over a lost soul in my life. I don't even know if I've cried over uh, my lost relatives. I've never been broken that much. All I can do is say a little, I lay me down to sleep prayer for them. Oh, God, you know, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll save Grandpa. And if you get around to it, go ahead and say Grandma too. Amen. And it's lifeless and it's powerless. But when all of a sudden you have an encounter with God, it's no longer now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep me when I die. I wake and pray my Lord to the gate. Amen. Exactly. That's what the Lord did. What? Can't be sensitive there. You live in your own life. Yourself. Being sensitive is acknowledging the Lord, interacting with Him, having a relationship with Him, making it very practical. I mean, it's a wonderful thing when you're born into the kingdom of God and you're born of the Spirit and you can feel the presence of the Lord moving on your life. And inside of a week or two weeks, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled with the power of God, ready to go and shake the world. Because then that's, you know, you're all started off right. But you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Because what's going to happen is persecution is going to rise. People are going to come up and say all these different kinds of things. Distraction is going to rise. Opportunities to draw you away is going to rise. And if you're not careful, you'll make the wrong decisions because you don't know how to come and get counsel. I know people haven't come and got. Most of the things that they've done wrong, it would have easily been prevented. All they had to come is submit it to the Lord and say, hey, what do you think, Pastor? And then I would have said, you know what? You can do whatever you want to. When I, when I say, hey, you know what? You can do whatever you want to. I wouldn't go with that. I wouldn't say that, oh, he said I could do it. Oh, he told me I could do that. No, I said you could do whatever you want to do. Because most of the time people say, come to me and they say, this is what I'm going to go do. Oh, okay. Anything else? Because that's what Father does. I'm just imitating Father. Oh, this is what I'm going to go do. Father goes, oh, okay. Next. But how about when we say, Father, I don't want to do anything unless you want me to do it. I've had people say, Pastor, I promise you, I will not do anything unless you release me to do it. I promise you, if you don't say, if you don't say yes on it, and then I, I promise you I will not do it. And then it came, push came to stuff. And it wasn't some small, minor little thing. It was about a big thing, getting married, moving out of state. I said, no. And I know you shouldn't do that. No, it's wrong. I tip up you. No, it's wrong. It's, it's going to be destruction for you. Believe me. Because they had already made it. And they made it. They had already made, said it. They volunteered. What do you just, whatever you say. Well, I heard from God. Don't do it. It's a destruction for you. Voila. God actually does answer. Amazing. He moves. He gives somebody a work from heaven. Amazing. 
Until you believe that, you never get to receive it. You never get to operate it. If you don't believe that God's operating with the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and discerning of spirits and, and direction and counsel in somebody else's life and a minister's life that's in your life, it's never going to happen in your life because you've disrespected the anointing. you violated the anointing. It ain't going to work in your life until you repent and make it right. It ain't never going to be in your life. You got to love the anointing, respect the anointing, honor the anointing. Sure enough, then it wasn't too long afterwards. Then they came back to me and said, "Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know that I'm leaving. I'm going out of town. I'm going to move out of state, and I'm going to get married." Right? Okay. I have nothing to say. Well, I'll, I'm just, I'll believe God for, you, for the best. We love you. We bless you. We love you. And we pray. We pray. God's love and grace upon you. And that's the way most people go, oh, I've decided I'm moving, I'm going to go preach, or I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to another church. You're never going to be sensitive to God that way. Huh? You, you're never going to hear God speak when you just do it whatever you want to do it, because you're practicing just the opposite. If you want to hear God speak, you've got to practice only doing things when He says to do it. And until he tells you to do different, you're faithful with what you already know to do. Sometimes people come and ask me, well, what should I do? I said, what did God last tell you to do? What did God tell you to do when you were down on your knees in the altar and you know you heard from heaven? And then they tell me, I said, well, just do that because when he changes it, you're, he's going to tell you. Don't do nothing until he tells you to do it. Continue to do what you've been doing. What's so hard with that? <laughs> Father wants to shape us and mold us and make us in, the, in a way where we yielded to the Holy Ghost, being led by the Holy Ghost, being instructed by Him, hearing His voice, responding to Him when He speaks. You know, you look at Moses. God says, Moses, I'm going to make you God to Pharaoh. You're going to be like God to Pharaoh. And of course, all you guys just read this, right? Because you read it 90 days. Praise God, you got this. Man, you're with me. Praise the Lord. And Aaron is going to be as a prophet. So you get to see exactly how a prophet ministry, a prophetic ministry, an anointed ministry is actually supposed to work. You get to see Moses and Aaron being an, a, 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 as a typification of God and you in ministry. It isn't difficult. You get to hear Moses say, Aaron, take down my rod. Right. <laughs> okay, God just said, take the rod. Now go ahead and, and do this and do that and do the other thing. Do you want to be that sensitive? You want to hear his voice? Yeah. It's going to cost you. What's going to cost you? The highest price you can pay. What's that? The denial of yourself. Feeling good about you. Well, I just want to feel good about myself. I don't feel like I've accomplished anything. I just feel meaningless. What is it going to make you feel valuable? Oh, I don't know. A couple million. I need to do a couple great things. I'd like to get the Nobel Peace Prize or something. No, it ain't going to make you feel any better about yourself. Oh, I want to build a business and make it successful and write a book. If I could write a book about my success. <laughs> now, that's going to do just the, have just the opposite effect. And once you do it, you're going to feel just as empty on the inside as you are right now. Because God is calling you to take a hold of an identity where you are complete. You are fulfilled. You have need of nothing else. It's all in Him. And until that becomes a reality, you need an encounter with God. You've not had a breakthrough yet. You have, you have somehow been spoiled by worldly things and worldly interests and philosophies and traditions of men. I hate to see somebody get baptized. Look, don't worry. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and I never got spoiled. Ha. I just kept getting more radical. I never took a detour. I've stayed right on this glorious highway of holiness. Amen. Ha, hallelujah. You don't have to go backslide. You don't have to take detours for hardness of heart. You don't have to go after self-interest. Come on. And those of you who have, you can repent. But it's going to be harder for you. Because you have to come back and face, once again, the things where you capitulated where you committed treason or treachery. And it's going to be double hard for you the second time around. Triple hard the third time around. Quadruple hard the fourth time around, you probably won't do it. You'll probably settle out and compromise and self-justify a wrong state of being. 
and a wrong way of living because it's too difficult, it's too painful. It means that you have to confess that you've been wrong. You believed it wrong. You did it wrong. You got a lot of people you got to go repent to. Uh-oh. Boy, this is good. This is good preaching. This is good. This is good. This is anointed Holy Ghost meeting. And I pray in Jesus' name these are pearls to you. Amen. And I pray you know that what you're supposed to do with them. Amen. Make a necklace or earrings. Wear them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 10, chapter 10. Go Luke chapter 10. I'm in Mark chapter 10. Thank you. Mark chapter 10. Hallelujah. Praise God. My wife and I, we we so tired. I mean, we've just been running wide open. She's over with, at, we got out of the baptism. She's over with the keys trying to open up the wrong truck. She's going, what's wrong with this? Lord, what's wrong? And then she noticed, wait a minute. This is a keyless entry. We don't even have a key. And there's something wrong with the truck. Lord, help. And she looked and said, it's a Ford. Oh, this is the wrong truck. And we're going to get up early in the morning. We could go to the Mission Training Center and we will get things settled out because I'm praying in Jesus' mighty name. We bring in our first graduate. We bring in our first people that we graduating from the orphanage in July of next year. I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm, I, I'm right now. We pressing in. I've been going after these relationships and academics because I want to have just the top-notch academic oversight of what we're doing, getting people involved so we can give folks from Asia the best credentials when they go back. And, uh, you know, kicking off, it's going to be the flagship couple of guys that are coming. We want it to be right. And I tell you right now, we, the Lord put in my heart long time ago, just build things to last for 200 years. And, uh, you know, things that are going to last a long time are necessarily going to happen overnight. And so there's a number of key things that we're still looking for God to put into place, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Things are going to happen in a beautiful way. Watch what, watch what Papa does. But what we're going to do is I'm not going to have any natural nothing living models after, after the world because I know I'm going to be bringing people, especially when we graduate folks or bring people from Joshua's a community because these guys are faith people there's like you know money came in uh, for for the ministry but we don't want to spend it on food because we can just walk alongside the river and tell the fish to come out of the river no, I'm not kidding you uh, a, a friend of mine said I couldn't believe it you just asked Timothy to take you fishing he said Timothy took me fishing he said what kind of fish would you like and I told him well you know, I told him what fish I want. And Timothy says, come. And fish jumped out of the water, landed on the shore. And he picked up just the one he won. Okay, because we're talking about people moving in supernatural, not living in natural. They, they have gone from hardened heart to soft heart, from natural. Because for, for, for them, it's before Christ and after Christ. They don't have another life. They don't have alternatives. They don't have a whole list of careers. And, oh, I'm tired of this career. I want to go to another career. How about Jesus' career? How about living? How about going to lay down your life for the lost? That's where they got. That's where that's what they're doing. They're raising up people within their mission to go to the unreached people groups, and then also having to raise up people in the mission because there's more than a million people coming into the kingdom every month. And the way that this the way that the the, the the church underground church works in China, you only have a hundred people in each meeting. That means you need to raise up ten thousand leaders each month. I was supposed to be there this month. They're in expectation for me to come this month. And I haven't been released to go. And I've got to tell them I'm not coming. And it's a big letdown for them. I'm going to have to wait till, I'm going to have to wait till March. Because there's so many people to train. You go in there, to the, go into the different places. And they've already got the farms already set up. Okay, so the things that we do in helping them is just to take them to another level in these things. To give them more support in these things. Because they're already doing it, man. Huh? But we, and that's just a front because what's going on is they work in the field six to eight hours a day and then they go to the Bible school, which is in the background when everybody else thinks that they're sleeping, they're studying the Word. 
because they're being trained up to go and be pastors and leaders. And the last time I was in the meeting, how many have been saved for three years? Nobody raised their hand. How many for two years? Nobody raised their hand. How many for a year? I think one person raised their hand, if any. How many for six months? Then everybody raised their hand. You've been saved for six months. You promoted into leadership. Pastoral ministries. You've got to go now be trained. See, that's a different life. Now you're saying, now you read the scripture. Man, I'll tell you right now, when, I, I, when the Lord sent me to China, I said, Father, if I get there and I find a bunch of religious people, I'm not going to even know where to begin. Said, I'm going to be sick of heart. I got there, I found people full of faith, more radical than myself, just full of the Holy Ghost. We, Ann and I walked into a place, a place where this particular church had never had an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And we walked in there, and as soon as we walked in, it, the, they were, the people were so sensitive. Why? Because they were so obedient. They were obedient to everything that they know. They were obedient to everything that they were taught. They're taught to live in a kingdom mentality. They're taught to live under governorship and under rulership and under authority. That's why one person can be easily over more than 10 million people and be effective because they live under such governorship and authority. Nobody budges unless the person that's over them says it's okay. It's a different mentality. So because they were obedient to everything that they had already known, understood, we walked in the room with the glory of God, barely lifted our hands, and the fire of God fell upon the people. They were out. Ah! Huh? They, they won the grand prize and never played the game. If you would, you know what I'm saying? They felt just like the guy who spent, you know, the past 10 years training for the Olympics and just won the gold medal. They felt the same emotional burst as that person. And all they did was just step into the presence of the Lord. Beautiful, eh? You have to understand, the only thing that's hindering you is you. The devil's not hindering you. It's your unwillingness to obey. It's your unwillingness to conform to the image of Jesus. It's you're constantly at a crossroads of decision and you choose you. You choose what you're going to do for you to make yourself look better, to make yourself whatever, feel better about yourself. Get rid of that. Stop it. Shut it down if you want to be sensitive. Come understand the Father wants to teach you something better than what you can learn in school, what you can learn in other self-promotion programs. He wants to teach you how to do signs and wonders and miracles. He wants you to learn to live in, in divine expectation. I know the angel of the Lord is standing here with me right now. I don't see him right now. I feel him. I have too many times had his encounter. Their encounter with me. So all I, if for me not to believe that they're with me right now, even though I can't see them or see the, 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 the results of them being here, I'm not going to harden my heart. God just, I mean, I just, we, we, Ann and I were just in a situation with Daniel. He's watching on, on right now on the web out of the MTC. And, you know, we had two 850-pound crates on the back of an 18,000-pound load, 18,000-pound, two 850-pound crates on each side of the back fender, part of it hanging over the back end over the lip about hanging over the lip about yay far are you with me are you listening to me 850 pounds and on top of that we had some wood crates just so that when we strapped it down real tight it wouldn't break the boxes because we strapped those things down tight i'm going down the grapevine i got to going a little fast on that 18,000 pound load i was going about 75 miles per hour down the grapevine i heard boom and I looked at my rearview mirror, and I saw rubber going everywhere. And said, what happened? We blow a tire. I said, no, nah, it's a truck next to us. It was us. We got down to the bottom of the, of, the, of the grapevine, pulled into the gas station there. Daniel went around the back of the truck and just stood there. He was just standing there looking. I went back there. I said, what's going on? He said, Dad, all the straps came off. I said, look, the wooden crates are still up there. You tell me there's an angel not sitting there right now holding that into place. First of all, going around those curves, the way we're going around those curves and those straps broke, and an 850-pound load on each side, boxes about yay high, should have easily just tipped right off. Furthermore, how about, how about the, those crates were just, they were nothing was holding them there. Huh? Ah, 
goodness gracious. <laughs> Anybody else say they've been spinning, flying through the air, going through somebody's windshield, going down the grapevine? Not me. I got angels. There you go. Huh? People get in my car and they say, listen, we're going to the best. Don't worry about it. I got angels. Then I'll just, I say, you want me to prove it to you? I'll start telling you stories. It, uh, just hang on. I'll tell them stories all the way to wherever we're going. About one event after another event after another event after another event. I'm not hard in my heart. I know what God has done. I know the per supernatural provision he's put in my bank account when we didn't have any money. And all of a sudden we went to the bank account and there's the money. I know about the supernatural provision when there wasn't enough people to even get to see $1,000 come in and 20000 came in. I know about God's multiplication. What yeah. difference does it make whether yeah. he multiplies bread or money in the offering yeah. basket? Yeah. Give me a break. I live in it. I don't, I don't think after self-interest. I gave myself over to another realm. I'm not going to continue to harden my heart and say he's expecting me to provide for myself. That was what was going on. He expects us to provide bread. I don't expect you guys to bring no sandwiches. I'm not talking about sandwiches. I'm talking about demonic deception that's trying to take you out. Oh. We're brilliant. I love reading stories like that. It gives me great hope. And so, you know, this actually goes down to another level. And basically, he's being questioned about putting away of divorce. Why did Moses give us the ability to divorce? And of course, they really took advantage of it. I mean, they're in the top in the um, in the Talmud, which is the oral tradition. If you burn the toast, basically, it was real cause for divorce. I mean, you could get divorced over the slightest little thing. If you gave if your husband felt that you gave him a, a, an inappropriate look, divorce. And you know, of course, Moses and, and the Lord Je Jesus said, "No, you, that you don't understand because of the hardness of your heart." What is what is he saying? Because of your unwillingness to do it God's way. Because of your unwillingness to conform to what he wants, God made a means by which you would be able to deal with the situations that you found yourself in. He's a merciful God. It's amazing. I mean, God gave provision because we're not willing to walk entirely in, in complete compliance to his will. I can't even imagine how he can be that merciful. Now, this is the more important verse of scripture that I wanted to read to you. I could have skipped that one, but still a good point. Mark chapter 16. Yeah, Mark chapter 16. Hallelujah. Pakasia la monkatea. Hallelujah. Haramongeshe. Halamongarasitita. Halamongarasitea. You know how many times the disciples kept going, we're sure he's the Christ now? That has happened over and again. Oh, we're sure you're the Christ now. Wow, that was an incredible miracle. That is amazing. Boy, it was good for us to be here. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you need to be in church all the time. You need to break through. How often were the disciples in church? They lived in church. They slept in church. The greatest pastor ever. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord has told me to make disciples out of people to train them in the things of the Spirit. That's why I have you in the meeting. That's why I post things on the web. That's why I've got YouTubes posted. I look at how many people. I, I, we can see who's all watching the YouTubes and studying the things. Well, that's why we do School of the Spirit. And people say, well, we haven't got to, we haven't got to lay hands on anybody, give them a word of knowledge. Because we're trying to get you to be happy first. We haven't tried to just get you to give yourself over to love to start off with. We're trying to, we're trying to lay the foundation. We're trying to help you understand you can't live wrong and function in the things of the Spirit. You can't have bad attitudes and speak evil things and think that the word of God's going to come gushing up out your mouth. Because you don't get sweet, you don't get sweet water out of a bitter fountain. We won't get your bitterness out. Amen. Amen. So people will be, people will be really happy. Hey, pastor, do you see any bitterness in me? The people that usually ask me that have no bitterness. The people who have bitterness don't ask me that. It's just perfect correlation. Oh, Pastor, did you see a problem with me? No, I didn't. So if you're prompted right now to come and ask me, don't. You don't need to. If you're not prompted to come and ask me, you do need to. Quit hiding. Quit hiding. Quit hiding. 
Say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and expose myself. I know he's got anything good thing to say about me. Ahab. Don't get, no, don't get a prophet of God because he's never got any good thing to say about me. <laughs> Give me 400 prophets of Baal to tell me some lies so I can feel good. <laughs> but don't get uh, Melchiah because Melchiah gets over here. And all he is is remembering the one bad thing that I did a long time ago. He won't ever let me. No, he's going to tell you just like where you live in right now. He's going to speak the word of the Lord. You guys are going to be reading that here pretty quickly. First Kings 22 is coming up on you. There's a lot to learn in the Kings. Hallelujah. My goodness, I get a, we get a church full of, 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 of Bible reading, praying, interceding people. We'll have a Holy Ghost meeting around here. We get, a, we get a church full of people that say, I'm tired of living for myself. Huh? I'm going to live for God. Forget about vacation. Let's go on a mission trip instead. Amen. Amen. I promised my wife a vacation this year. And then the Lord told me, no, I want you to go. And I want you to stand with Rodney in... Uh, in Washington, D.C. with what he's doing. So we went and wore ourselves out in Washington. And I said, baby, maybe next year. Kind of like Aliyah. You know, we're going to go up. We're going to ascend up to Jerusalem next year. Every year. Huh? We're going to do this thing. Every year. It's not a big deal. Big deal. We're gonna, we, we don't need no vacation. Huh? There's no rest for the wicked and the righteous don't need any. Amen. Because <laughs> we living in the rest. Fact of it is, I had vacation today. Standing out there in the water, standing there. I haven't been surfing in so long. I thought my, I did the most, just, you know, kind of stroke my hand through the water. Wow, well, I haven't been surfing in a long time. And then the next thing I knew, I was captivated. I was caught away in the glory. I was listening to people talk to the Lord. I, I, I didn't know Paul's name. I didn't know Terry's name. I didn't know anybody's name. What is your name? What is your name? Who are you? Tell me your whole name. Say it again. What is it? What is your name? Tell the Lord. What is your name? Give me your whole name. It's like the, all everybody in heaven coming into heaven, listening to each person speak out their name and saying, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm buried with him by baptism. I'm not living for myself anymore. I stand here today as a witness to all men and angels that my life is over. My life is hidden in Christ. And I wait to the resurrection of the righteous. Hallelujah. 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 I'm sorry, guys. Some of you, I might have hurt you. I hurt you because I heard some of your back slam like you did a belly flop. <laughs> but I tell you, I just felt the power of God to shove you down into the water. I mean, I held a couple of people under for a while. Just <laughs> held them under. Ha, 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 ha. Nothing God will say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I baptized Robert, then some, then the angel baptized him right afterwards. And then God sate retire. Hallelujah. He went under at least three times. <laughs> Once by my hand, twice by an invisible. Jesus. What a glorious life. Just throw in to the things of the Spirit. Quit worrying about yourself. The Lord wants you to live a carefree life. He said, be careful for nothing. He said, let me be careful for your life. Somebody said, what are you going to do about the bills? I'm not doing nothing about them. You're not? No, they're not mine. I belong to the Lord. I'm not my own. They're not your bills. Not my bills. But I thought you signed on dotted line. No, I didn't. I signed on behalf of Jesus. I just used my name because he's hooked up with me. I'm in him. He's in me. Well, what about this? It's not my problem. What do you mean it's not your problem? It belongs to God. I'm doing everything I'm doing. I'm doing unto him. It's his. Well, what are you going to do about this? And why are you going to do that? I'm not doing nothing. It's his, it's his. I'm not touching his stuff. I'm his servant. He's the master. Huh? He owns everything. When you step over in that realm, all of a sudden, a whole new way of, uh, uh, see, I'm starting to lose it. A whole new realm of living <laughs> begins. What happens is we start going over into another realm, a spiritual realm. Our bodies don't work in the same way. We don't function in the same way. It's true. It's tough. Our motor sensory skills begin to shut down. Something more real than the function of our body begins to take place. 
it will actually move mountains. Hallelujah. It will actually open up blind eyes. It will cause deaf ears <laughs> to be unstopped. Hmm. You know, my dear friend John was telling me again the other day, they just called him back to Acapulco to do another crusade because he was tired. He had, it was the last night of the meeting. They fought through those meetings. They had signs and wonders and miracles, but it was just one fight after another. Uh, a preacher got killed just before they got there. He was killed by the cartel. It was one upset after another. And so it's the last night of the meeting, the end of the meeting. He's sweating. He's, he's drenched with, with sweat. He, 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 he's headed for the door. He told all of his people who's with him, he said, when I say go, let's go. Let's, we're out of here. We're not going to get swamped. I'm worn out. And on the way out, they, they bring three people, not just any three people, three deaf mutes. They're standing brought in front of him. And every camera that he didn't even know existed in the meeting came out, was in his face all over the place. And the Lord said, whatever you do, don't stop praying because they, it, was a, it was a setup, tree enemy trying to stop it. And there was this girl just standing there defiant. And he put his fingers in his ears and he said, open in Jesus' name. And it lasted for about 30, 45 minutes. People are starting to, starting to go away. He's not going to stop. That's valiant. That's valiant. Now, come on, man. You'll be made valiant and fight. You'll get sensitive. He could hear God. God said, whatever you do, don't stop praying. Huh? And now you've got somebody who's learned in the church through faithfulness how to get into a prayer meeting and don't stop praying. You know, he's a man of God who gives himself every year to 21 days of fasting, de dedicates every year starting January 1st for 21 days to give it the first fruits to Jesus. Come on, man. There, there's a price to pay. Father looks and beholds. This defiant girl just kept rolling her eyes and shaking her head. When he would ask, can you hear? And the interpreter was standing there, you know, can you hear? And just defiant. All of a sudden, she began to sob. She fell to the ground, broken, as she began to speak and hear. And then the next one and the next one. Huh? That's why, you see, that's another realm. That's why our, our motor function and our articulation might start breaking down. But so there's another realm kicking in. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. There's a whole nother round of, of, the, of being sensitive to moving with the Holy Ghost to where the doubt and the unbelief and the uncertainty and the fear of man and the fear of failure is irrelevant. It can't even touch you. Touch you. Did you cut that thing off and quit listening to it long ago? You quit listening to the imagination about you no more. You ain't doing what you're doing for yourself. You're under a divine assignment. You're here for the living God. He told us this is, what he, this is how he told us to preach the gospel. He told us to cast out devils. He told us to command the mute to speak, the deaf to hear, the blind to see. That is what goes on in this place. That is what's supposed to be happening in this place. If you can live your life without the power of God manifested in your life, then there's something wrong with your heart. If you're willing to live your life without the supernatural divine glory of heaven, which Christ Jesus died for you and I to have and gave to us the best gifts, there's something wrong with your spirit. You listen to me. You're too, you're too willing to bathe yourself in your own pleasures. There's things which are convenient for you. Instead of laying down your life and pressing in. Praise God for praying hide. Praise God for Father Nash. He who sacrificed everything to see heaven moved on earth. I'm telling you, this is what God's calling you to do in this place. Huh? People say that I'm rough and gruff. I was a lot, I used to be a lot rougher and gruffer. I, 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 you know, there was a time in my life, I didn't, you know, I'm telling you this the other night. I didn't feel the manifest presence of the Lord, but I could feel the gift of faith. It's like when I looked at Margaret, and she had spent all of her life with a, a you know, chronic case of asthma. And she had her inhaler out for a walk. And I just looked at her, and I said, you don't need that. And she was healed, instantly healed. I was 22 years old. And that, uh, back in those days, I was a lot rough, a lot more harsh. I just tell you, you know what, you're an idiot. 
you're a religious idiot. I don't, know, I don't know who you are. I don't know what God you serve. I want nothing to do with you. You are an unbeliever. You believe to be sick. I believe to be healed. Uh, leave me alone. And the Lord helps us. He grows us up so we're a lot more compassionate with people. I was, in, I was intolerant. I was intolerant. And, and praise God for his mercy. Amen? Amen. Huh, baby? I find my man said over here going, this true, man. He just don't know what true was. I was intolerant for unbelief. I was intolerant. I couldn't handle it. God put it on the inside of me. I just dealt with it wrong. I was too, huh? I think I was too. I think I'm starting to go back to that. I might have been more right. I might have actually mellowed out for man, not for God. He might have wanted me to go to another level of radical. Another, ra another level of don't you tolerate unbelief. Don't you tolerate self and high-mindedness and rebellion. Don't let you, don't let anybody uh, question your authority. Get in their face and smack them with the Holy Ghost. Huh? I mean, I can see Jesus doing it. I can see Paul doing it. I can see, come on. I see the prophets of old doing it. So he was saying, oh, no, we're going to go to interceding. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. The love of God is here. Be peace. Peace. The love of God is here. We, God's so full of mercy. God's so full of mercy. It's only going to be intolerant when people don't want to do it. It's only intolerant when people act like they're doing it when they're not doing it. Huh? Now it's trying to shake the things around. Say, no, don't do that. Don't be that way. Come on now. Father's made plenty of, gave him plenty of grace and plenty of mercy. Okay, we're going to have plenty of love, loving kindness. I'm not going to be rough and gruff. Okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to mature, I've matured in love, but I'm going to be more insistent. Huh? I'm going to be, I'm just going to place more of a demand on the people that have been born again, full of the Spirit and given the power of the living God to execute His righteous judgments in the earth. Excuse me, everybody wants to have an in individual, individual relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, but when it comes to having responsibility over that individual relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, all of a sudden, two people start backing up. I need to back up. It's a blessing to have an individual relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. you just got to be held accountable for what you're supposed to be doing with that, the responsibility of that. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me read this to you. You with me? Everybody still love me? Yeah. Thank you very much. Verse 14. If you didn't, it would be sad. But I, would, I wouldn't change. I w I'm only going to change where he wants me to change. I'm not going to let up. I'm going to, the Lord told me recently, he said, I want you to place a demand on people. You're too soft. I'm telling you. He told, he told me, I, I want you to execute greater authority. I want you to get in people's face and tell them like it is. I said, Paul, do you know what that's going to do? He said, yeah, I know what that's going to do. Don't worry about it. That's what I'm telling you to do. And so I'm going to do that because there's things stirring right now. There's, there's, things are stirring in the spirit. It's good. It's good. Geneva knows. I've been letting it. I've been letting it. I've been letting. I've been reading the riot act. I read the riot act to her. I don't want no distractions. I don't want nobody doing any ministry that's not in all the meetings at all. Change everything. If people can't hook up enough with God, I don't want them leading. I don't want them leading a squirrel. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Are you with me? Much less a human being. When I put wrong examples before people, don't, we're going to cut those things off. We're going to say, don't do that. Don't live like that. Don't walk that way. You ain't going to be blessed doing that. Don't imitate that. Huh? And you know, if, I, if, if somebody comes up here and I give them a directive word, and in the future, if I see them walk back to the back and hear people trying to console them, I'm going to come back and shut it down. Because that isn't, that acts actually sedition. That's actually seditious. What you do? Oh, I, I feel, oh, are you okay? What do you mean am I okay? Well, that was pretty hard. Are you, or are you a demon? <laughs> Still in the word of God?
tilling the seed? Are you just like the fowl of the air that come to swoop down and steal the seed? Is that what you are? Because that sure ain't the spirit of the Lord. That sure ain't being sensitive to the word of knowledge. That sure ain't being sensitive to the authority in the house. Hmm? The time of evil would be the body of Christ instead of the body of strife. Amen. It's time for God's people to come under authority and recognize he's in the house. Lest the heart just continue to be hardened. And we begin with a hardened heart. All we can do is trust in ourselves and trust in what we understand and trust in what we know and do things that we, the way we're comfortable in doing them. God's stirring the thing here. He's stirring it. He's stirring it. A complete abandonment to come follow him. He's stirring it. He's trying your heart. He's evaluating. He's putting the spotlight upon you. I don't know how he's going to say, come eat my flesh and drink my blood. But I don't know how he's going to do it, but he always does it. Just before there's going to be a great outpouring. He sorts it out. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to be offended for the word? Yes. Are you ready to be examined? Are you ready to come completely under the divine authority of God's will so that you can move when he moves and do what he... That's total abandonment. It's total abandonment to stand there with your fingers and somebody's ears screaming at them for 30 to 45 minutes be healed. With everybody, first all the cameras are there, now the cameras are going away and the whispers are going on and, huh, and the eyes are rolling. Come on, man, you're going to have to learn something about the things of the Spirit to do that. And those are the kinds of things that we're up against. And God's raising up valiant men and women of the Spirit. Uh, we're not going to just have to look back in the days of old and talk about Mariah Woodworth Etter and Smith Wigglesworth and others of the past. God's raising you up. God's raising you up with total abandonment where all you want is do His will. All you want to do is function in the realm of heaven. You've already died and gone to heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, just stay here. Huh? Laca de Prasea. Quit worrying about who you're going to get married to. Big deal. Huh? Quit worrying about it. Live, live, for the, live for the things of the kingdom of God. Father, bring a husband along or a wife along. Amen. Amen. If all you can do is think day and night, I'm my wife. Oh, day and night, oh, I need a husband. Day and night. Day and night, crying out to God. Day and night, I need a new car. Day and night, I need a new house. Day and night, I need another thing. Day and night, I need whatever. A vacation. Where's your heart? Where's your passions? Father will stir them up for heaven. Let me read this to you. Afterwards, he appeared on the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them. Jesus, we haven't seen you now for several days. And first thing you do is you start upbraiding us. Upbraiding is another word for rebuking. Just straightening them out. Sort of. Jesus, your ministry is pretty radical. Yeah, it is because he wants you to live a different kind of life than you've been living. He's going to speak harshly. Because it, Father is not going to bless earthly reasoning. He's not going to bless it. He's going to call it hardness of heart. Huh? Yeah. He's not going to condone human behavior and human thinking. First thing he does is upbraid them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believe not that which was written. They believe, they believe, forgive me, they believe not them which had seen him after that he was risen. It just can't be possible. I know I've seen miracles. I know I've seen signs and wonders, but it just can't be possible. That was then. Here is now. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. The, the problem is this. You have to have an encounter with the Lord. You've got to let that miracle work within you a confidence that everything is different now. Uh, because if between the miracles you're living for yourself, ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to be just as unbelieving over the next miracle as you was over the first one. A miracle, the encounter with God. When you have a miracle, when you encounter a miracle, you encounter, you encounter God. Did you know that? You do. I know that some people encountered a miracle and all it did was make, make them more angry against Jesus. But think about this. When Peter, Peter just a rough, gruff, big, you know, fisherman, several generation fisherman, from Capernaum. Hard guy. This little guy from Nazareth, don't know nothing, not, not the carpenters, they don't know nothing about fishing. See Galilee from Nazareth. Sells him, go, go out into the, 
deep and we're going to get a great catch of fish. And he says, wait a minute. I've fished all night. There's no fish out there. But because he just heard Jesus preach and he heard him preach in a way he never heard anybody preach before, he said, okay, just because you say so, I'm going to go out there. But I don't expect nothing to happen. That was his attitude. He gets out there. There is a great catch a fish to where the two boats start to sink from the, such an abundance of the catch. What does he do? He has an encounter with God through the miracle. He falls down on his knees and he says, depart from me, Jesus. I'm a sinful man. He has an encounter with God. Suddenly he recognizes he's standing in the presence of the Almighty. The result in his life was a complete transformation because he allowed his heart to be softened. He allowed his heart to he allowed his heart to respond to the miracle. He was having a problem living in the miracle realm because he was constantly going back to relying upon his own understanding, relying upon those things which he knew, which he was taught from a child. Jesus was kept trying to pull him over to live in the heavenly realm. Don't live that way anymore. Live like me. Live over in this heavenly realm. So then he promises everybody, he says, listen, guys, it's going to be different because what I want you to do I want you to go wait in Jerusalem and you will be endued with power from on high. Everything will change. I will give you a mantle of glory, the same one that the Father gave me. I will give you the same one that I have was given so that you can live the same life and have the same ministry and have the same supernatural work that I have. And that same, that same glory, that same mantle is here tonight. This is such a beautiful thing. We don't have to talk about stories of long ago. We can talk about the reality of God, what God is doing right here, right now. He's unchanging. You don't have to continue on living in the same dimension, the same tongue, the same understanding, the same events of your everyday life. Everything can change tomorrow. It's a decision of your will. You don't have to get up in the morning and live the same way, think the same way, act the same way, do the same things. You don't have to do it. All you have to do is choose. To wake up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to take full control of me. I want to be taught of you. I'm going to step into the school of the Spirit now. I'm going to learn what the pastor's been saying about living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and participating with you and understanding very fundamental things that you said to do. And if I would do them, then I can hook up with you, and you're going to take me now to show me things that would be impossible for me to hook up with because I don't even know how to do them. So I'm going to do the things that clearly you tell me to do. I'm going to give myself to them. Now lead me. Now guide me. Here I am. Show me how to do this. Show me how to believe for a miracle. Show me how to step out in this realm past my own ability into supernatural Just let your hands towards heaven. Ikata ikiata. Ikata ikiata. Urasatara neyapra. Somebody might say, well, you know, you preach this all the time. Absolutely. And I'm going to preach this all the time for the rest of my life. It's what Jesus preached all the time. It's about God's people coming into all the fullness of his power. It's about change, though. You're going to have to decide, wait a minute, I'm not going to do things the same way. I'm not going to live the same way. I'm standing right now in the presence of Almighty God to recognize that you're actually here in his presence, that he exists, that he's here right now. That he's, re re he's ready to touch you. He's ready to overwhelm you. He's ready to fill you. The scripture says, the scripture says, redeem the times for the days are evil. And he tells us how to redeem the time. Be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Be filled with the Spirit. Wow, what a great plan, Lord. Foo, foo, what a great plan. I can redeem the time. I can change the generation. I can change the events around me. I can change the atmosphere. Yeah, but first you got to change the atmosphere of your life. Yeah, but first you got to change the atmosphere of your life. First, it's an atmosphere of your life. You've got to, you've got to understand how to touch heaven. God wants you to show, God the Holy Ghost is here to show you how to hook up with heaven right now. <laughs> to, to redeem the time for the days of evil. My goodness, all we need to do is be filled with the Spirit and we can redeem the time. We can change the seek. We can change the situation that people find themselves in. 
just like the agnostic men today. There are the, the, the masses of people out there, they've never felt the anointing. They've heard the stories. They've heard the Bible stories. But they've never felt the manifest presence of God. It's time for you to carry that realm. It's time for you to be sensitive to that realm. To move with that realm. To float in that realm. Papa's here to produce a greater display of his person through you. Jesus is here right now. He's been talking to you all day. He's telling you, there, it, it isn't just about a single event. It's about your willingness now to go and follow him. It's about your willingness to learn from him, to be taught of him, to be instructed in all the ways of his life. That's what this is about. This is about a complete abandonment and resigning yourself over <laughs> to his life. <laughs> To, to his identity it's time for you to get to feeling really good about who you are in Christ Jesus huh it's about time for you to start feeling really very very good about who you are in him huh so you don't need to feel good about who you are in you it's a it's this is the day this is the season this is the time oh Ramon Jesse oh Ramon Jesse oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to back down. You don't have to draw back. You don't have to feel inferior when God has made you superior. Hallelujah. When in terms of everything that belongs to this world, you're not beneath it, you're above it. You're not below it, you're in charge. God hasn't made you the tail end, you're the head. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. How, just take hold of your inheritance. Just believe today. Just, I said believe today, right now, that you're the heir of God. That you're the heir of God and co-inheritor with Jesus. I, I tell you right now, go ahead, listen to me. Trade in all those goods you've been living by and go ahead and get yourself some true riches. Hallelujah. 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 Everything is changing. I'm telling you, everything is changing. You don't have to worry about changing yourself. God's here to change you. Everything is changing. He's just looking for people that want to be picked up. He's looking people for the people that are hanging out at the bus stop. He's looking for people hanging out at the meeting place. He's looking for the people that are waiting for his coming. Yeah, those are the people he's going to raise up. He'll raise them up. One day, it seems like you're just living a common, ordinary life as, as everybody else. And because of the hunger, because of the thirsting, because of the crying out, because of the persistence, God takes a hold of you and you find yourself standing in his presence, endued with his power, hearing his voice, beholding his grace. I'm telling you, it's stirring. It's stirring. The things of the Spirit are stirring. God's got his eyes He's on those who are willing to go all the way. He knows who. It's no time for half measures. You listen to me. This is no time for half measures. Father's looking for, he's looking for those with total abandonment. And I'm telling you, those things are proven in very casual ways. The state of your heart is hard to hide from God. And ultimately, you can see the state of your heart by the choices that you make. It's time for you to sell out to God so that you'll make the right choices. So Father will find in you a person that he can take all the way into the things that he's purposed to do so that a lost and a dying generation of people who live under gross darkness, who live under the power of, and the torment of demon spirits and the power of hell and men can be liberated. Just like the agnostic today. He said, I feel something here. I feel the power. I feel the power here. I feel something that I didn't know was ever going to even be displayed. Oh, come on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The power of God. The power of God. As real as the power of God was manifested on the beach this afternoon. It, that manifest power of God can be revealed as you walk into your workplace tomorrow. Mmm. 
Vamos, okay, if you can't walk into your workplace tomorrow full of the Holy Ghost, you need to call in and say, I quit. I'm not coming back. I'm done over there. I can't serve you and God too. And then get, to get yourself alone with God until you have another authority where you can go into any place, any dark corner of the world and shine with the brightness of his presence. Listen, don't worry about it. Grow stark. Somebody said, I'm concerned about martial law. I'm concerned about nuclear bombs. They say Russia's going to invade. Don't worry about it, man. I'm telling you right now, it don't matter what happens. We're moving forward. I'm telling you. Listen, I'm not, let's say somebody said we're going to go through the tribulation. And I say, look, I'm not going through the tribulation, but bring it all on because I'm going to shine in the midst of all that darkness. The gross darkness is over the people. You rise and shine. God called us to, to shine with his beauty. The darker it is, the greater the light will shine to your life. Hallelujah. Father wants to train you how to move in healing, miracles, as he ministers directly to you concerning your own physical life, your own body. My wife just, my wife just had, a, had a situation where she got hit with this double lung man, pneumonia thing. And she said, honey, I can't breathe. And I said, well, I mean, listen, I put my ear up to the back of to her back, and I could, every time she'd breathe, I could hear all the bubbling and stuff, you know. I said, in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Out of her body. I said, baby, how are you doing? She said, I'm, I'm doing fine in Jesus' name. So I went to sleep. And then she's not dying. Because I, I, I can't live without her kind of thing, you know. Two by two, I need help here. So we, we live in, for however long we're going to live together. Then I'm secure. So the next day, about a week later, she says, this thing is still bothering me. I said, a foul thing. I said, well, you know what, baby? Do you want to get antibiotics or something? She said, no. She said, I want to break through this thing. Huh? And, and, you know, when you're willing to go all the way, because you've got to go past your fears. These, these things are going to come right up and get into your space where you're going to be afraid. You're going to have to do something. If you don't do something, you're going to die. If you don't do something, you're going to lose your wife. You better get up and take care of her. That's when I turn over and go to sleep. As soon as I hear something like that, you foul spirit of hell. Because why? I'm sensitive to God. God don't speak like that. Satan speaks like that. Now listen to that nonsense. Are you going to give your life over to him? Huh? It's going to be challenged with your help. I had a situation where, you know, according to all the various different pathologies, I saw melanoma on my body. And I said, you foul spirit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, get off of me. And then, you know, you'll immediately hear all the voices of fear. Well, the early detection, you can get after that thing, man. This, the, and this, that's, where this, that's where that prayer was born. Father, I thank you that you strengthened me in my body to stand against sickness and disease. That's where the prayer was born in my spirit. Ha. <laughs> it didn't say... So, it, 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 these things, these things of faith, are born in our life to very practical things, huh? And then while I was praying, I just said, went ahead. When I thank you that you strengthened me in my spirit to stand against sin and iniquity, and you strengthened me in my soul to love only you, to desire only holy emotions, and to only want those pleasures that are at your right hand. We might as well get the whole job done while we're doing it. Amen. You know what will happen to you? Pray like that. You're only going to have holy emotions. Huh? Unholy emotions become evil and offensive to you. Those things that Satan uses to draw people into the lust of the flesh, lust and I became they become offensive to you. Huh? Come on, people. Come on, it's time for us to grab a hold, start living for God. It's time for us to grab a hold, start living for God. It's time to have a practical interaction with the Master. Why don't you raise your hand one more time towards heaven? Just a posture of receiving. That's all. I tell you, God's using this church. God has used this church. He's going to continue to use this church, but it's going to get high. It's going to go higher and deeper. Hallelujah! 
it's going to go broader. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the power and the gifting of God that is upon your life is about to explode through your life. All you have to do is be willing to go with him. All you have to do is be willing to cooperate. Everybody would just stand with me. Just cooperate. Just participate. Just participate. I'm thinking this is a great night for the Lord Jesus to return. I'm thinking I'd like to wake up in heaven in the morning. That could be what's stirring. I know something's stirring. I know something big's happening. I know, that, I know that no one is even allowed to be here but by invitation. I know that no one's even allowed to be here unless the, there is a willingness to completely surrender their lives. Something's about to break. Something's about to break. Something's about to break. Pat called me up the other day and he said, he said, Mark, he said, I don't, he said, I just feel this thing. He said, he said, I feel this thing about San Diego and about the church there. He said, I feel this thing. It's like people from all over the world are coming there. I see it. I see people coming from everywhere. There's some great thing that's going to happen. And, you know, for me, it's like, I've heard this. I've heard this since 1987. And it's real. It's real. It's real. People just standing around going, why do we have this big building? Hmm. Get sensitive. Why do we have the big parking lot? Get sensitive. Well, you know, we worked all night, nothing happened. Nothing was supposed to happen. You're just supposed to work. Just to be obedient. Just to, you're just supposed to do what you're supposed to do. You, you were measuring the wrong results. The results God was me me measuring was your willingness to be obedient. Yeah. Do you think that your expectation is somehow going to be let down by God? There ain't no way in heaven. You think it, you could dig a ditch by the Spirit and God's not going to fill it with His water of His presence? You think you're going to stand and cry for His fire and He's not going to consume the whole thing with His presence? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost, the rushing mighty wind of His presence, the outpouring of the glory of God through your life in Jesus' name. An expectation of bold faith. Jesus Christ, who's the same today, yesterday, and, day, and forever, is here to heal anybody who will believe of their sickness and their disease. But you're going to have to go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. People are going to have to learn both sides of the story. That's the ministry of Jesus.
I want you to understand the power of God's here to heal you and touch you and set you free. Those of you who've lived in a prison of addiction or prison of self-interest, no more, no more after this day. No more after this day. No more after this day. In Jesus' name. I want every one of you to get an offering to come worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. Come with total abandonment and give. And watch what God will do. He's going to work a miracle for you. God's going to work a miracle for you. I want you to press in with me for a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I want you to press in with me for such a moving of the power of God. Tens of thousands of people come into the kingdom overnight. That's what I'm in expectation for. I'm in expectation for such mighty signs and wonders to be worked out in the streets. Places like we went today. Out into the streets. I'm telling you, that's where things will start happening. I, I'm, listen to me. It starts real simple. Listen. It starts real simple. It starts in your workplace. Summer, come here. Summer, come here. I am I'm just so blessed. Come here. I'm so blessed with what's happening in Summer's life. Just look at everybody over here. It, listen, hey, look at everybody. I want you to look at me. Everybody. Just not too long ago, Summer was just an employee at Burger Doodle or whatever it's called. <laughs> I know it's Burger Lounge. Uh, it's like this. And all that happened was Brittany just flowing in the Holy Ghost, just being Brittany and carrying the mantle of the presence of the Lord. God touched Summer's life. She came to the meeting. Life totally transformed, baptized in the Holy Ghost, caught away in the glory, baptized today in water. And I want to say, God wants to use you in the same way. Father wants to use you in the same way. But you're going to have to be desperate about having children. You're going to have to be desperate about seeing revival because this is the way it happens. I'm talking about tens of thousands of people are coming into the kingdom because you're willing to go all the way out there in the realms of relationship with the Lord. So the atmosphere of your life has changed. You change the atmosphere of the place that you're in, ultimately bringing people into the place. They're going to get transformed with the power of God. And they're going to get touched. Watch what happens. You guys, you just watch what happens. Do these things. It's a simple abandonment of walking away from your own life from your own self-interest to say, all I am is responsible to do is to go everywhere and declare the things that Jesus Christ claimed. Those things that Jesus Christ said, that's all I need to do. If I'm willing to do that, I'm going to start finding, I'm going to start bringing souls in, into the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, man, just come worship the Lord. Find people around you. Hug them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.